The following is a special presentation of the Boomer Sports Network. Ring your bell, stomp your feet. Everybody get ready for the Omaha Bees. He wants to throw a good time. He has a man downfield and it's From about 49 yards. That's a long enough kick. It is good. Fakes the hand. Actually does give it to him. To the 20. The 15. Runs over a blocker. Fisher once again steps away from it. Throws downfield. And it's intercepted. Proud sponsors of the Omaha Beef Radio Broadcast include First Command, B&D Turf Cars, Bath Fitter, Berkshire Hathaway Realtor, Bree Beck, Budget Rent-A-Car, Celeron, Certified Piedmontese, Comfort Inn & Suites, CPR, Cell Phone Repair, Brown Property Management, DBS Burke, Down Syndrome Alliance, Eternal Tattoo, Great Clips, In-Phase Car Audio, Jerseys, Kingdom Insurance, Kings Moving, La Smash, Luftys, Mengelsons, Marines, Mattress King, McAllister's Deli, Nebraska Ortho and Sports, Ozzy's, Peaceful Roads, Pint Nine, Porky Butts, Roberts Nursery, Salsaritas, Schrock Innovations, Scores, See the Trainer, Titanium HVAC, Valley Marine, and Zero Res. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas, where it's another beautiful night for indoor football. I'm Todd Walkenhorst. Richard Tiemann, he will be along shortly. Tonight, it's a Champions Indoor Football Championship game. They call it Champions Bowl. It's Champions Bowl 6, the number two seeded Omaha Beef against the top seed Salina Liberty. The Liberty are 11-1 on the season, but that one loss is to Omaha last month. But beyond that... Omaha will be heavy underdogs in the contest tonight. Salina is back to full strength with the return of their starting quarterback, Tyree Adams. And the two Salina quarterbacks this season have only thrown for a combined four interceptions all season long. Salina's plus 16 in turnovers this season in comparison to Omaha beef is even. It'll take a very well-played game for the beef and probably a little help from the Liberty to come up with the upset, but... It's playoff football, and you just never know. And at stake for both of these teams here tonight, their first championship. One team will achieve that here tonight. When we come back, we'll talk to the head coach of the Omaha Beef, Marvin Jones, ahead of Champions Bowl 6. It's Omaha Beef and the Salina Liberty straight ahead. You're listening to the Omaha Beef pregame show, brought to you by Crown Property Management, right here on the Boomer Sports Network. Next time you're looking for a haircut, why not just get a haircut, get a great clip. If you have hair, they can help you out. Men, women, and kids. That covers pretty much all of us where you can go to get today's newest hairstyles. They're open evenings, weekends. No appointments necessary. Perfect for those busy family schedules. Drop by Great Clips Proud. Haircut sponsor of your Omaha Beef professional indoor football team. Nebraska Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, they strive to be a center of excellence for orthopedics and sports medicine. They're also the official doctors of the Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football Team. They're a group of board-certified orthopedic physicians, many of whom have had fellowships or trained in subspecialty areas. Their physicians have trained among some of the top medicine experts and training facilities in the country. They place a great deal of value on each and every opportunity they have to assist patients regain their quality of life they deserve. Call them today, 402-488-3322. When I hired Bathfitter, I got a new bathtub that I love. It's made with the same quality materials they used in luxury hotels. It's great. Even my mom thinks so. I love your new tub, sweetie. Trouble is, when she visits, she thinks she's staying in a five-star hotel. Could I get fresh towels? Yes, mom. (laughs) 
mom. From luxury hotels to homeowners, Bathfitter exceeds expectations. Transform your bathroom in as little as one day. Visit bathfitter.com to learn more and book your free in-home consultation. We've all heard the old saying, you're the company that you keep. And in everything they do at Valley Marine, their goal is to be the company that you keep. That helpful friend you call with a problem, that place you just drop by to say hello and share a laugh. Their dealership is comprised of an incredible team of people, all boaters like yourselves, with the common purpose to give you, the customer, the very best on water. It's simple, really. The golden rule. Treat others the way you would like to be treated. Call today, 402-704-4961, or visit their website at valleymarine.net. Everybody get ready for the Omaha beat. With the head coach Marvin Jones, Champions Bull Six. Congratulations, coach. And uh, just tell us your thoughts about getting this. Obviously, this was the goal from the get go, but uh, it's only happened the third time in team history. It's a big achievement. Tell us uh, what your thoughts are. Well, it's definitely an exciting day for me and the guys. I mean, it's a goal we, we've talked about from the first day, but it was a step by step. And, you know, I told my team, let's not just be satisfied with getting here. We come here to win this time. You know, uh, conventional wisdom, if you talk to a lot of people or whatever, uh, on paper, Omaha appeared to be an underdog in this game. Is that a fair assessment or not, do you think? Well, I don't think it's a fair assessment. I think it's, it's a one-game day. Whoever plays better today, that's, that's who's going to win this game. It don't matter about – I mean, we, we, we got 25 guys on the team, 21 going to be on the field, one's a kicker. So 20 of them is the ones that's really going to decide this game. And what have you seen this week from the team as far as preparation? Has it been a normal week? Is it a little different? How would practice go? Well, I kind of shortcut practice down a little bit so they can have be resting and ready to go. I've seen like everybody's been focused. Um, the guys are excited. I mean, this is there, and I got so many of these guys here that are happy with uh, 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 wanting to win this thing and feeling like we can win this thing, and not just happy with being here. And that's what I want to see from them. The response has been great. I'm, I'm very happy with where we all feel mentally. Everybody's been looking focused today. Not a lot of playing around. The guys have been ready. So I feel great about today. Game plan wise, it's the third time you see Salina this year. You split with them one game apiece. Uh, I assume there's a few wrinkles. I mean, this is obviously a big game. You probably have a couple of things you've thrown in today. Well, yeah, I mean, there'll be some things we do, but that, that, the, the majority of it is going to be what we do best. Uh, our bread and butter, I mean, you know, they have a good defense defensive line. It's, it's pretty good. So, that just find ways to neutralize. They're going to make plays. We got to understand. They're going to make plays, so you just can't get down. That's just part of the game, but it's, it's what you do to play after. Their uh, starting quarterback, Tyree Adams, he's back. He was not uh, in the lineup uh, when Salina came to Omaha. Does that change the team? They got two pretty good quarterbacks, but uh, how's the team different when Adams is playing versus Kidd? Well, I mean, it is different because they both do uh, a lot of things differently. But at the same time, we still we, – we, our, our main focus is, look, we, we're not going – it's a focus on Tracy Brooks, the running game. That That's what has been the issue with us in the past. And, and when we're able to neutralize that and make it one-dimensional, we can't have a two-dimensional running and pass. Give us uh, your thoughts on uh, what does Omaha have to do that they haven't done all year or do successfully to, to win today. <laughs> Uh, well, we have to just play mistake free. Uh, no, no one play uh, touchdowns. Uh, kicking game has to be on point. Uh, no interceptions. I mean, that's going to be the key for us is the turnover battle. Salina plus 16 on the year in turnovers. Omaha is even at zero. So obviously, uh, as you mentioned, don't make mistakes. Uh, just take a second personally. I know you probably don't want to do this, but reflect on your coaching journey and just what the last year or so has meant to you and uh, being able to what you have achieved. Well, my coach's journey obviously <laughs> didn't start out the way I wanted to in, in uh, other jobs. Uh, but, you know, I finally, you know, when I finally got hit old Omaha, I, I think, it, you know, it was a great thing, great office. I mean, you know, Todd working hers has been awesome, you know, helped me out a lot and just been there instrumental. So, you know, it's, you know, it's been a process, you know, and, you know, I found an organization that believed in me and what I can do. Yeah. 22 years, Omaha's never won a championship, longest running indoor team in the country. And uh, obviously, I'm sure you're hearing uh, from fans what this means to them as well, how important this game is. Yeah, we hear a lot from the ones that haven't attended the game. But anyway, uh, no, but you know what? At the end of the day, you know, the team is named after Omaha, so it's synonymous. It's Fans, you know, for whatever reason, uh, you know, maybe that can't be there. But we have so many fans and that have been so good to us. And, uh, you know, we got the party bus coming up. That's full. So, uh, 
you know, I tell these guys all the time, you're not just playing for yourself. You're playing for a whole city because this is, <laughs> this is the only pro team. So just just taking it in stride, and the, and the guys have been very responsive and respectful to the fans, and I think that that's uh, really important. It just shows how much the, the people here really care and they support this team. So I'm looking forward to, to you know, fingers crossed being that one that, uh, you know, turns history around. Champions Bowl six. It's the Champions Indoor Football Championship game. Omaha Beef, Salina Liberty. Good luck tonight, Coach. Thank you, sir. That was the end of our country's national anthem. Before that, that was the head coach, Marvin Jones, just ahead of Champions Bowl six. Salina Liberty 11 and one on the season. Omaha Beef eight and four. Teams matching up for the third time this season. When we come back, we will set the starting lineups and get you ready. We are minutes away from kickoff. It's coming straight ahead. It's Champions Bowl six. Omaha Beef Salina Liberty right here on the Boomer Sports Network. Mr. Porky Butts, Blaine Hunter, he grew up barbecuing in South Texas from a very young age. He was helping his dad check in the temps of fires as soon as he could help. The passion that would happen in the world of low and smoke pit smoking. Over 27 years of experience combined with culinary education from Johnson and Wales and FBTC culinary schools, he started competing professionally in the barbecue circuit in 2013. Five short years later, he's accumulated one of the most impressive resumes on the barbecue circuit across the country. You have to try it today. 154th just north of Maple and at PorkyButtsBBQ.com. Hey, beef fans. Our official car rental company, Budget Car and Truck Rental of Nebraska, has convenient locations throughout Omaha, Lincoln, and Grand Island to serve you. Budget is locally owned and operated and provides friendly service. Choose from a wide selection of cars, trucks, SUVs, minivans, cargo, and passenger vans. Budget is celebrating beef fans by offering a 20% discount. Visit BudgetNebraska.com now to book a reservation. Use the promo code BEEF and never miss a beef game. It is expensive to buy a house right now in Omaha. We know. So you're looking to rent. Smart move. But you need to be smart with who you rent with. You need to check out Crown Property Management for your next rental. Professional property management. Not just some landlords owning properties as a hobby. They take care of your issues and are fair and honest. AC goes out. They're on it. Roof leaks. Just hit them up. Orange slime coming out of your sewer. We know nobody wants to deal with orange stuff. Find your next property at crownmanagementomaha.com. When looking for your next property, just look for the crown. Attention craft beer fans at Pint Nine. They're committed to tradition and innovation. They stand on the tradition of brewers before them to create aroma-driven American ales and complex Belgian beers. They appreciate fine German lagers and English session ales, but they also crave the innovation of one-off batches and barrel aging. Their beers are highly fermentable and highly digestible while being scientifically sound and artfully executed. They hope you enjoy drinking their beers as much as they enjoy brewing them. Visit their website today. It's pint9brewing.com. Cheers. Even when a big game isn't on, Jersey Sports Bar, Grill, and Kino doubles as a comfortable neighborhood bar with an aural entertainment provided by state-of-the-art Bose Sound System with a digital jukebox accessing over a quarter million songs. Jersey Sports Bar, Grill, and Kino offers over 20 local and international beers on tap and dozens more by the bottle. Full liquor and wine selection as well. Live Kino, where you can win up to $50,000 in cash. Leather Kino chairs, darts, video games, and a staff that prides itself on prompt, friendly, indulgent service. It sets them apart from the run-of-the-mill sports bars. See for yourself. 501 Olson Drive in Papillion. Back at the Tony's Pizza Event Center, Salina, Kansas, seconds away from kickoff. Champions Bowl six. It's for all the marbles in Champions Indoor Football. Coin toss just completed. Omaha has won. They will defer till half number two. We bring in Richard Tiemann. Hey, it's, welcome to Champions Bowl. Hey, it's good to be here. This broadcast, I assume, is being powered by Red Bull once again. Absolutely. We got the IV going. We're good to go <laughs> and uh, drive home probably. We'll see how that goes uh, based on the results here tonight. But, uh, you know, we talked about it's a big challenge. Let's just face it. That's what we're looking at right here. We got a team that is highly favored and should be uh, just preparing for this game. I'm going through the stats. I mean, it's it's pretty one side. Omaha's not a bad team, but Salina 
has executed, and that's really going to be the difference between these two teams is who can execute specifically on third down conversions in, in the red zone. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of what you can do to capitalize on different opportunities. Coach Jones mentioned, you know, in the game of the week preview, he said, you got to take this game from them. They're not going to give it to you. He's, he's absolutely right. I don't know if there's ever a game that the other team doesn't let you take it from them. They give it to you. But I know that you've got to avoid takeaways, giveaways, all that, and put the, the game in your favor. And I think he kind of likes the underdog mentality. That's what they've been all season for a majority of it. And here they are, once again, the underdogs. Salina Liberty, we talked about in the pregame, plus 16 on turnovers. That is insane. Omaha is even. And, you know, you give a team uh, an extra possession and a half per game, and most likely you're going to win some games, and they have this year. They're 11-1. and one. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a well-balanced team in Salina. Haran O'Neill has done a phenomenal job all season long. But... You know, there's been some adversity on the Omaha beef side. Not that there hasn't been with Salina with the two quarterbacks, but Coach Jones has found a way, obviously, because he's here now with the Omaha beef in the championship. Omaha defeats Sioux City 40-39, to an epic game a week ago. Sioux, uh, Salina had a pretty easy time as they cruised by Dodge City in the semifinals. We're ready to go. Jeremy Reynolds will kick off for Omaha. Left to right, bouncing ball to get a start. It's be fielded at the six-yard line, brought up the middle of the 10, the 15. Scoots around, has some room out near midfield, and a good kickoff return for the Salina Liberty to get a start as Trey Roberts on the return. So Salina with good field position on the opening kickoff. They'll start at midfield at the 25-yard line. And... At quarterback for the Salina Liberty will be Tyree Adams. He's a rookie, would likely be rookie of the year. It wasn't for an injury that made him miss a handful of games late in the season, but Ron O'Neill was in control, well-rested him, and put him back in to finish it off. Play action, first play. Gets a yard as he has to scramble. Omaha doing a good job downfield, not having any options for Adams. He has to keep it all the games a yard, be second down to nine. Yeah, good job by the defensive secondary there, and they have so many offensive deep threats that, I mean, for, for them to not give him much to work with and have to scramble for a yard, he's doing so much dancing back there. Uh, good on the Omaha defense. Omaha's defensive backs are pretty good and untested for most of the season, but Salina likes to throw deep, as you mentioned. We'll see if they do that. They do pitch this time on second down and nine. Tracy Brooks. And does what Brooks does. He gets eight yards. It'll be third down and one. And you heard Marvin Jones talk about in the pregame, Tracy Brooks. You know, if he gets eight or nine yards per uh, carry, it's going to be a long night again for Omaha. So, yeah, Tracy Brooks has just really put this team on his back with the two quarterbacks. You mentioned the handful of games Adams missed. So he's a workhorse for sure. Third down and one. Salina opening drive at the 17-yard line of Omaha. Fake to Brooks, goes downfield, and it's bobbled and caught at the 10, the 5. Still fighting for yards, driven into the boards. It's good for a first down as they find Chad Steinwalks on the reception. Big third down there for the Liberty, and that's what Omaha wants to try to avoid is letting them. You know, it's one thing to let them get the first down, but that was a big first down. You know, they picked up quite a bit. Salina, they will convert and convert regularly. Third downs on the season, 55%. One for one now tonight. We're under 13 minutes to go. Opening drive of the game. No score here at the Pizza Palace in Salina. Liberty threatening. It's first and goal from the four-yard line. Adams in the pistol formation. Brooks in the backfield. Wide out on each side. They go in high motion. They fake to Brooks. Adams wants to throw. Buys some time. Rolls out to the right side and tries to force it in. He needed to thread a needle. It's incomplete. It'll be second down and goal for Salina. It looked like there was a, a couple of different options he had. He went to pitch to Brooks. I don't know. I think that was probably the option, and maybe he just didn't feel like they were going to let him get all the way to the outside. But then he's looking in the end zone. No, you know, not a whole lot of, of distance to look like you're looking downfield, but it just seemed like he, he maybe held on to it a little bit too long. Brooks, a heavy favorite for Offensive Player of the Year in the CIF. Those awards will be Announced next week. Two wideouts, far side, in high motion. They hand off to Brooks. The ball's on the ground. It's in the end zone, and Salina falls on it. I don't think they can. Well, they're going to let him advance the fumble into the end zone. And it's a touchdown for Salina. 
Wow. So Brooks, a rare fumble as they put the ball on the ground, but they've only turned it over via fumble twice this year, and they fall on it in the end zone. First bounce goes the Liberty's way. They're out in front six to nothing. Yeah, and Brooks got popped at the goal line. Uh, you don't see many of those hits on a guy like Brooks because he is uh, he, he trucks his way through. And they're going to review this play, uh, I guess, to see if he was down before the ball came loose, which would bring it back outside. And if you've ever been here or joined us on your broadcast, you will know that the replay equipment is not close. No. It is far away. And uh, right outside of Topeka. <laughs> and so this is a timely process. And listening to uh, Salina broadcast throughout the season, uh, I believe it's accurate that they have not overturned any replays in 2021. Uh, it's hard to do when you don't have the vantage points that some teams do. There's a lot of teams in this league that, uh, you know, they have – Great equipment and great angles, but sometimes they just miss a little, and, and I think Salina misses a, a little more than, than fans and players would hope. So what you're saying is uh, it's better better to watch it on the radio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't argue with that tonight as we wait for the replay to see if this touchdown will count. There's 11-11 remaining in the first quarter of play as Salina takes advantage of good field position on the kickoff return. Out to the 25-yard line, and from midfield, they drove 25 yards and finished it off, we believe, with a touchdown. At issue here is a ball came loose, whether it's fumbled, I suppose. I didn't see how close to the boards it was, if, no, if there's I, anything as far as that goes. What was interesting was the ball came loose. I don't think anybody even realized that ball was loose for a bit. Omaha had a chance, but just didn't see it. Yeah, and those are the ones you want back early on, you know. You don't think about them now. You think about them later when it's like what could have been, and that, that definitely could have been huge momentum for, for Omaha. 2019, the playoffs ended here as well for Omaha. It was in the conference championship game. If you remember, that game started rough for Omaha. They gave up 21 points in approximately the first five minutes, but they had an interception that they still remember to this day that could have really – changed that but it fell to the turf and instead went incomplete uh so we know it's about momentum and we have a good crowd here tonight at the tony's pizza event center that is making some noise and looking to cheer the liberty to their first championship in their nine-year existence you may remember they started as the salina bombers back in 2013 for i believe it was just three seasons then became the salina liberty as they rebranded with an ownership change, stayed in the same league and whatnot. Oh, and here comes the parade back from Topeka. We'll see what they saw. The ruling the field shows clearly a fumble. Remember the slide the end zone. So they hold up the touchdown. As called on the field in the Liberty have taken a six to nothing lead. So out for the Liberty is Jimmy Allen to kick the extra point. He's 89% on extra points, but more impressive, this will be his 74th attempt. He's made 65 of them. <laughs> Needless to say, Salina scores a lot of touchdowns. Snap is a little off, but they get it down, and we have contact in the back, but no flags, and the point is good. 10.52 remaining here. First quarter of play. It's Champions Bowl 6. Salina strikes first 7-0. We'll be right back. You're listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football on the Boomer Sports Network. DBS Burke. Who are they, might you ask? Well, if you own a business in the metro area, they could be one of your best friends. They are one of the best local printers for quality digital commercial and wide format printing in the metro area. They service clients across the Midwest and specialize in small-scale digital products, direct marketing, and integration. Print solutions, direct marketing, integrated solutions, and fulfillment, they've got you covered. Visit them at dbsburg.com or drop by their office right here in Omaha, 89th and 8th Street. That's DBS Burke. Ten fifty-two remaining first quarter of play. Omaha looking to get their hands on the ball first time tonight. It's Champions Bowl 6, the Champions Indoor Football Championship game. 
Salina, Liberty, the Omaha Beef, 7-0. Liberty out in front as they take the opening drive. 25 yards for a touchdown and extra point. They have the lead. Now, Jimmy's got the leg for an uno, but it being the championship, do you risk it until you need it? We haven't seen him go after it much this season. Of course, Salina, quite frankly, doesn't play in a lot of close games where one point is going to mean a whole lot to him compared to that risk-reward for field position. But just a reminder, if you put it between the uprights on the kickoff, it's one point and to the five. If you miss, it goes over the back wall. It's to the 25. High end over end kick. He's just going to put it in the end zone. It's be fielded at midway point and brought out a great coverage as there's not much room for Rashad Pargo, who gets to the seven-yard line. And that's where Omaha will start with the long field. Pargo returning kicks, former Salina Liberty member, and uh, we're going to see probably some returners that you don't normally see during the season trying to get a little spark. Deshaun Jones returned a lot of the kicks this season for Omaha. Yeah, offense has their work cut out for them, but I think, you know, they knew that coming into this game just in general. So we'll see what Coach Jones has for this first drive for the Omaha Beat. Andrew Jackson out of the gun. This is a throw first, throw second, and throw third type offense. It's not balanced. Jackson, though, will scramble on first down, dumps it off. It is complete, good for a couple of yards as he fails to find his safety valve. It looks like that was Norman Darden. The rookie out of Seen Hill, good for two yards. It'll be second down and eight out to the 11. And defender was lucky he got a handful of Tartan's jersey on that because he was pulling away from him, and he had nothing but green. Omaha on the season. They throw for 158 yards per game. They only run for 26. They figured out a long time ago uh, that passing is going to be the Vehicle of choice for this offense. Omaha looked off sides on the play. They're going to go deep. Man downfield, Jones Jr., one-on-one. Jump ball, it's incomplete. Jones Jr. down in the end zone. They went for the long ball as he was matched up. All the way downfield. It's Kendrick Harper on the coverage and could not come down with it. Omaha gambling early. End result, though, is going to make a third down and eight deep in their own territory. And the crowd's going to get loud here in Salina. Third down and eight. Omaha trailing seven to nothing. First series of the game for Omaha. Moving left to right on your Boomer radio dial. Two wideouts on each side. The high motion out of the slots. Jackson drops back out of the gun, has time, throws, and it's intercepted. It's intercepted 25 in Omaha territory down to the 21-yard line of Omaha as Dontre Matthews gets his fifth interception of the season, and this game is eerily feeling like the 2019 playoff game in the way that one started here two seasons ago. Yeah, and, it, and I saw Drew getting helped up again. That's like the third time on that drive, and there were only three downs played that uh, he seemed to have to be helped up. So hopefully that line, you know, they can uh, start holding them back for him just a little bit longer. But, man, you know, you want that one back. The last thing Omaha could afford was to get themselves into a hole, and the defense is going to have to step up to avoid that. We've got time out on the field. We'll be right back. You're listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football here on the Boomer Sports Network. Omaha Mattress King Showroom in Millard has many mattresses right on display. They're a locally owned chain of mattress stores that offers quality at a great price. They have adjustable beds, queen mattresses, king beds, twin beds, full and king and queen mattresses as well. Fast delivery. Come and see what... They have on sale. They also have great financing to get you into that mattress that you want. Visit them today online, omahamattressking.com, or in person. They're right off Millard Avenue in downtown Millard. Hey, you've got a car, but now we need to make it a cool car. One place to go in town, InPhase Car Audio. They've got you set up. You need an alarm. You need amplifiers, speakers. Let people know that you're coming. Radar detectors, LED lighting, safety solutions, and more. If you want to add it to your car, they have it at InPhase Car Audio. Visit their website, InPhaseCarAudio.com, or even better yet, stop by the store. 134th and L Street, InPhaseCarAudio.com. Hey, 
Back at the Salina Liberties, Tony's Pizza Event Center, Todd Walkenhorst, there is Richard Tiemann. If you want to hear the game, we invite you, or we're glad that you've chosen us to listen to the contest. Here is Champions Bowl 6, Salina Liberty out in front, 7 to nothing. As Omaha throwing an interception on third down. Very aggressive on their offensive play calling on their first series, despite starting deep in their own end. And Salina, for the second time, has great field possession as they start their second drive with a 7-0 lead. Here's a handoff to Brooks right up the middle. Bounces outside, finds four or five yards. And Tracy Brooks will make it second down and five for Salina as they bring him down at the 17-yard line. Yeah, they're going to go heavy with Brooks, I think. I, I don't know like what kind of lead is comfortable in O'Neal's mind, but I, I have a feeling it being the championship game, he's like, seven points, we'll take it. We'll, we'll grind them out, especially being in Omaha territory now. Yeah, there's not going to be much uh, comfort until there's triple zeros at the end of the fourth quarter for O'Neal. Heavy to the near side, play action. Now they'll throw it over to the near side, a little toss, a little catch. It's good for three or four yards to Brooks, and it's going to be third down and one. And Salina just moving the ball down the field. Tyree Adams on the season. He's a rookie out of Western Carolina. He came in 78 completions, 108 attempts, 72.5 completion percentage. But it's just because Haran O'Neill puts him in great positions like that with lots of options, a lot of safe passes. Yeah, I mean, he's a great coach, and his players play for him. And obviously having two quarterbacks that have done very well, he knows what he's doing offensively. Third down and one at the 12. We'll see if they take a shot right here as Adams pitches out to Brooks. Far side, Omaha got him a little bit in the backfield. He stretches with the ball. It came loose. Omaha has it. I haven't heard a whistle. I haven't heard a whistle. It's going all the way, and Omaha thinks they have a touchdown. The referees, I think, have let this go so they can review it, which is probably the wise thing as there is no whistle on the field. The ball came out, and Omaha did run it back all the way as Trey Dudley-Giles, but this was one of those that you could tell the officials uh, knew the play situation. I think were wise to let it play out, knowing that they could go back and review that. And before they even made a call, either way, they never signaled (laughs) touchdown. They never signaled down. First thing he said was, we're reviewing this thing. Yeah. So, a huge review here, as we have seen Salina... Put the ball on the carpet twice in their first two possessions. They jumped on the opening fumble to get it back as they've only turned it over twice by a fumble this season. But this one is in doubt as they'll go back and review it at the remote viewing station down the tunnel. I don't know. They just leave the tunnel (laughs) and they come back. (laughs) They, They leave, they go somewhere, they come back. So the call on the field, though, is an Omaha touchdown. As we mentioned, they have not overturned a play that they've reviewed, according to uh, what we've heard, this season. It is four out of the five. I don't want to suggest anything, but it is four out of the five. It's the normal officiating crew for the Salina Liberty with one uh, official from Omaha on the crew. Here's something interesting, though, about where we're at right now with this review is they did not whistle him down. So the play resumed. He went to the end zone. Correct. So now they have to see evidence to overturn that call. And I, unless he was down, (laughs) unless he was down, uh, it'll be a touchdown for Omaha. If he's down, it's going to be third down for Salina driving for a two touchdown lead. If it stays Omaha's way, we're going to be looking at a possible tied ball game. So a huge call here in Champions Bowl 6 as we await. Second review in the first seven and a half minutes of this game. Both official initiated, so no timeouts charged to either team. They have the ability to do that on critical or crucial plays at their discretion, and rightly so, this uh, falls in that, and the other one that they did review was the other fumble on Salina's first possession. They need to get a golf cart or something to drive them <laughs> down there, because this, this is a journey, I think. 
Well, and you look down on the field, you see Salina's offense still on the field, and then Omaha's kicking unit on the field right now. <laughs> Ron O'Neill was close to where that was, and he was arguing it immediately, I think, where you may have some judgment, and that's not reviewable, was what the forward progress was stopped. But either way, here comes the Zebras. Let's see what the call is. <laughs> And for the first time this year, we're here to see history as they reverse a call yeah. at the Tony's Pizza Event Center. So there you go. I could not tell if he said that he was down first or if the forward progress was stopped. I assume he was down. I don't believe uh, it would be prudent to say forward progress was stopped via review. But either way, the ball's going to stay with Salina, and the result is it's fourth down and one. Offense will stay on the field for the Liberty. 38%, 8 of 21 on fourth down this season. Omaha needs a big stop right here. Men in motion. Adams fakes the pitch. He can run. He gets knocked down. The defense has stopped the Liberty and will get the ball at the 14-yard line. A huge defensive stop for Omaha, and they needed that to get some momentum back. Man, have we missed C.J. Bivens on that defensive line, especially a healthy one. He was all over that. Five and a half sacks for Bivens on the season. Just got another one right there. 6.51 remaining first quarter of play. The defense is held. And I'll tell you what, you're not going to hold the Salina Liberty offense on too many possessions. So that's a win for the defense. And now they have to take advantage on offense. They start the game clock. Omaha starts in their own field again at the 14-yard line. Same formation, slot high motion. Jackson quick drop and throw to Jones Jr., Anthony Jones Jr., out to the 20-yard line. That's good for six yards. It'll be second down and four for Omaha. Yeah, and Jackson will take that all day. Uh, he'll dump it over the middle and just chunk it, especially when it's a one-touchdown difference right now. We've really seen in the last few weeks as uh, Jackson's seen some better pass rushes. He's really had to speed up is throwing, and he does that out of the gun. Here it is, second down. They find Tyler Jones. That's been good for a first down as he's hit near midfield. Good for five yards. First down for Omaha to the Beef 24. And Jones on that was uh, Jackson's first, second, and third read because he, he saw him all the way, and I knew exactly what they were doing, and, and that has worked very well for them all season. 51st catch of the year for Tyler Jones. 419 yards on the season. First down and 10 at their own 24, trailing by seven, trying to get on the board. High motion in the slots. It's a pass out to Rashad Pargo and another three or four yards, and we're seeing those quick drops and quick throws for Omaha, trying to take advantage of a little coverage underneath. Yeah, Omaha, they want points on this drive, and I think, you know, really – Jackson and Pargo want it right now because they are the former Liberty players. You know, there's been a lot of talk going into this. Omaha running a little up tempo now back on the ball. They call this their NASCAR package as they try to wear out the other team. Jackson scrambles around, throws it into the seats. He's brought down and knees on his back. Slow to get up. Took a pretty good hit on that play. Omaha does not have a backup quarterback on the roster. No, and we saw him do something that we have not seen him do very much, and that's throw the ball away. He's uh, not had the best touchdown-to-interception ratio, and part of that is because he tries to force it when he just doesn't need to, and uh, I think he's playing very smart right now at this moment. Third down and seven for Omaha. They are at the Salina 22-yard line. You hear the crowd here in Salina. A lot of beef fans here as well as a party bus and more came down. You can hear cowbells and all sorts of things. It's a... Great atmosphere here tonight for Champions Bowl 6. You figure it's four down territory. High motion near side. Omaha nearly off sides. Actually, they were. They stopped the play as I believe Omaha got across the line of scrimmage too soon, and they do call the B for the false start. That will back them up five yards. So after the infraction, the ball back on the Omaha side of the field down to the 23-yard line. Third down and 12 as the Salina defense trying to return the favor 
after Omaha stops the line on downs. Back to the base formation for Omaha. Two wideouts on each side. High motion out of the slot. Andrew Jackson wants to throw. It's complete to Jones Jr. near the sticks. I think he has it, and it is a first down for Omaha. Wow, way to hang in there, A.J. I mean, they've been on him all night, and he's taken some thumps, but uh, that was great for a first down. Real nice effort there. Second catch of the night for Jones Jr. 37 catches on the season. As Omaha is threatening here with three and a half to go in the first quarter. They trail by seven. The ball is at the 15 of Salina. They'll line up Pargo on the far side. Three wideouts on the near side. High motion. Jackson quick and throw. Tyler Jones complete inside the 10. He lunges forward down to the nine-yard line. That's six yards for Omaha. The second down and four. You know, and I know that the penalty is something that you want to avoid in the championship game, you know, something like offsides, but it gave, it's giving their defense longer to rest. Like, this has been a great drive for Omaha. The defense is catching their breath again. Second down and four. Omaha makes a substitution, actually puts a running back in the game to Sean Jones. Boy, we didn't see him much in the first half last week against Sioux City as he went exclusively pass happy against the Bandits. Right here, 10 on the play clock. Jackson trying to change the play. Jackson, or uh, running back, lines up in the backfield with him, throws towards the end zone. It's incomplete. He had a couple of options, but neither of them were good. Good coverage by the Liberty as it's third down and four. Yeah, he led looked like Pargo and Jones Jr. are just a little too much. Either one of them could have had it. You'd like to see a definite intended target so that nobody tries to get in the way of the other, but... Salina in the red zone is 73% on the season. 48 of them are touchdowns in their 49 scores. Omaha on the other side, though, only 67% in the red zone. 38 touchdowns out of the 47 scores. Third down and four. It's loud here. They fake the handoff. There's a flag on the play. Should be a free play for the beef. As Deshaun Jones is stacked up after a short game, I believe we have offsides, which will result in a first down. For Omaha. Omaha is getting ready for a first down by penalty and sends Deshaun Jones back off the field, bringing the extra receivers. It is a legal defense. All right, so Omaha here with a little breath of life in the red zone. Half the distance from nine yards out makes it the four-and-a-half-yard line. First and goal for Omaha trying to get on the scoreboard. They trail 7 nothing. under two to go here. First quarter of play, Champions Bowl six, CIF championship game. High motion, Jackson in the empty. Has pressure, throws, and there's a lot of hand grabbing down there. As he looked for Tyler Jones, could not get it to him. Lucky. That ball fell harmlessly to the ground. You talk about him taking some chances he shouldn't have. He threw his double coverage right there. Now, there was a lot of blue jerseys in that end zone and only one white one, and that was Ty Jones, who he's been great, but I don't, I don't know if he's that great right now. With uh, vastly outnumbered. Substitutions again on offense. It's from the end zone, so it's a long run to get them in. Darius Meters along with Deshaun Jones as they'll bring in two running backs. Play clock under 10 as they break the huddle. Game clock at one minute and rolling here in the first quarter. Play clock's at five. Jones, or Jackson under center. Needs to get the snap off. He does as it expires. Hands off to Jones. Slices through. Maybe picks up a yard. It's going to be third down and goal. It seemed like Salina was almost ready for that play and they've got that big back, as you mentioned, Meadows uh, or Meters. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you see him coming up to the line, you just know it's uh, it, bring the rain. <laughs> you you kind of telegraph when you bring in your running backs that you're thinking of run, and they sold out on that. And Deshaun Jones throughout the season only averages 2.1 yards per carry. Gets a yard right there. Omaha, third and goal, four-yard line, five on the play clock. They're going to have to hurry up. Jackson checks off. Puts the receivers in motion. Gets a snap off. They let it go. He looks in the end zone. It's, was that complete? It was complete, but it's outside the goal line. It's going to go down to the one-yard line as time expires here in the first quarter. Anthony Jones, Jr. on the reception. 
But time has expired in the first quarter of Champions Bowl 6. Omaha Beef are at the one-yard line with fourth down when we come back. You're listening to Champions Bowl 6, Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football right here on the Boomer Sports Network. Comfort Inn and Suites on 70th and Grover's Omaha's Freshest Hotel with a great central location just completed a total hotel renovation. They feature rooms and suites that include high-speed internet access, free full hot cooked breakfast daily. They feature the on-site fire water grill. It's the home of the Omaha Beef Coaches Show on Monday nights, serving local favorites daily. Hotel is located just off I-80 at 72nd Street, within minutes to several attractions and businesses, including the Furniture Mart, UNO, Horseman's Park, Funplex, Ralston Arena, and also the new Baxter Arena. The hotel is located with a short drive, CenturyLink, Henry Dorley Zoo, downtown Omaha, and Omaha Zeppelin Airfield. Also, if you're visiting for the College World Series, the Berkshire Hathaway meeting, Maha Music Festival, Taste of Omaha, Nebraska Balloon and Wine Festival, Jazz on the Green, Shakespeare on the Green, or any of those, you'll find the Comfort Inn centrally located within minutes of each one of these. Make your reservations today. Call them, 531-213-4085, or book online, choicehotels.com. Omaha Mattress King Showroom in Millard has many mattresses right on display. They're a locally owned chain of mattress stores that offers quality at a great price. They have adjustable beds, queen mattresses, king beds, twin beds, full and king and queen mattresses as well. Fast delivery. Come and see what they have on sale. They also have great financing to get you into that mattress that you want. Visit them today online, omahamattressking.com or in person. They're right off Millard Avenue in downtown Millard. Hey, you've got a car, but now we need to make it a cool car. One place to go in town, InPhase Car Audio. They've got you set up. You need an alarm. You need amplifiers, speakers. Let people know that you're coming. Radar detectors, LED lighting, safety solutions, and more. If you want to add it to your car, they have it at InPhase Car Audio. Visit their website, InPhaseCarAudio.com, or even better yet, stop by the store. 134th and L Street, InPhaseCarAudio.com. Back at the Pizza Palace, getting ready to start the second quarter of play. It's Champions Bowl 6, Salina out in front, 7 to nothing. But Omaha has fourth down at the one-yard line, trying to see if they can tie this game up. Obviously, they're going for it offensively. Got a pretty good kicker, but you're not going to let them do it from one yard out. So, get the crowds riled up here we go fourth and goal one yard line omaha beef trying to get on the board goal line package in fullback and running back metters and jones play clock is down to one down to zero and he just gets off to give it to metters and we have a flag on the play as he stopped i think we're gonna have an infraction on the defense Salina was ready for that play, though, as Metters had nothing between the tackles. And maybe even had a slight loss, but we're going to have a legal defense on Salina. And they're going to move it halfway to the goal, so it'll be about a half yard out now. And fourth down once again. And if you're Omaha, you need this. Like, you, you need to punch it in here. We've seen them stall on the goal line before. Like This needs to be a statement score beginning of the second quarter. Let's go. Omaha back in that goal line package. I formation. Metters in the fullback. Jones and the ball's on the ground, but Jackson picks it up, leans forward, and we got flags as they stop it. I think we're going to have a false start on Omaha. And they do. They call it on the beef that backs them up five yards and now makes it fourth and goal from... The six-yard line. So does Marvin Jones send in Jeremy Reynolds, who's had a pretty good season kicking field goals to get on the board. He's going to leave the offense out there. Five and a half yards now they need to the end zone. A little more room. They leave the same personnel in with the two running backs. And now Marvin Jones will use his first time out to think about Maybe he's going to think about kicking, or maybe he's going to think about changing personnel. Well, this is a tough call. I mean, normally the mentality is you take the points. Uh, and, and the championship, yeah, you take the points, but at the same time, it's the championship. 
and you you need to get even keel with them. Yeah, you know, field goals are going to be tough against the Salina Liberty, who are normally going to put touchdowns on the board. They're going to take a timeout on the field. We're going to take it with them. We'll be right back for this big fourth down. You're listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football on the Boomer Sports Network. At First Command Financial Services, they are committed to coaching our nation's military families become financially disciplined and confident. They pride themselves on helping clients get financially squared away from the start of their military careers all the way to retirement and beyond. Give them a call today. It's 402-291-3040 or visit them on their website at firstcommand.com. Proud sponsors of Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football. At Schrock Innovations, they're proud to be the best in computer repair services for Omaha, Lincoln, Papillion, and Des Moines. Computer repair is a passion for the technicians at Schrock Innovations, and they know your time is valuable and you need your technology fixed right away the first time. And they are proud to be a leader in computer repair as well. Call them today, 402-884-0880, or visit them at schrockinnovations.com for locations near you. We've all heard the old saying, you're the company that you keep. And in everything they do at Valley Marine, their goal is to be the company that you keep. That helpful friend you call with a problem, that place you just drop by to say hello and share a laugh. Their dealership is comprised of an incredible team of people, all boaters like yourselves, with the common purpose to give you, the customer, the very best on water. It's simple, really. The golden rule. Treat others the way you would like to be treated. Call today, 402-704-4961, or visit their website at valleymarine.net. Back in Salina, Kansas, just a reminder, you're listening to KOBM Omaha, 94.5 FM, 1420 AM, and on the World Wide Web on MyBoomerRadio.com and on the app. Todd Walken, Horse, Richard Teeman, 1428 till halftime of the CIF Championship game. Salina Liberty out in front of Omaha, 7 to nothing. Both teams looking for their first ever championship. Omaha has been doing this longer than any other indoor football team in the country. 22 seasons without a championship. They've been to the championship game three times, once back in 2000 and two against the Tennessee Sabercats. They dropped that one, and then three years ago, Champions Bowl three, actually four years ago, as they dropped to the Texas Revolution. Never had a game at home in the championship. 0-2 in the championship games. Big play right here for Omaha if they want to get their first. It's fourth down and goal, and actually they send out Jeremy Reynolds for the field goal. Jeremy Reynolds, 9 of 23, 39% on the season, but this is a shorter one. 19 yards out, he's usually pretty good from this distance. Snap is down. Kick is up, and Reynolds is good. He nailed that one. Tenth field goal of the season for Jeremy Reynolds, and we have a four-point game here in Salina as the Beef get on the scoreboard, and you said it. They had to get something out of that. I'm sure they're disappointed. They were a half yard out. They were not able to get a touchdown, but they don't leave empty, and now it's up to the defense. Well, imagine your frustration level. You're in the championship game. You get down to the half goal line because of a penalty on the defense. Then you get moved back because of your own penalty. If you don't get seven points, you're frustrated even more, where at least now you have points, you can breathe a little, and now you're going to have your defense go back out after they're very well rested. They got a little extra time on that timeout with the media. So it's a great situation for Omaha right now. Marvin Jones, I'm sure, is also putting into his considerations that when we get to the second half, they will get that second half kickoff too, so they'll get a possession there. So they need to stay within that, uh, you know, 10 points or so range uh, going into the second half to be competitive here tonight. So 7-3, to three, a high-scoring Salina offense who averages well over – 45 points per contest so far has seven. 14.25 to go till halftime. Jeremy Reynolds will kick off from his own goal line. As Kendrick Harper, or excuse me, that's actually Trey Roberts in his own end zone, awaits the kick. 
Reynolds has been pretty good on kickoffs, and here's a bouncer, and he's hit by Tracy Brooks. He'll pick it up at the 7. Out to the 10, has some blockers out to the 20 midfield again. And for the third time in three possessions for Salina, they will start on their own side of the field, field position battle. Salina has been winning. Yeah, and that was Chris Perry with the shoestring tackle there. Of course, he's incredibly dependable on these situations like this. But, man, if he got past him, I don't know if anybody would have gotten to him. So it's unfortunate that they're on their own side of the field to start this, but at least, you know, they have a chance to hold them off, maybe even push them back. So Omaha giving the short field once again. To the Liberty, they'll start at the 23-yard line. I think I said Sabercats. It's Tennessee Thundercats. Game was at the Civic so long ago, hard to remember. Handoff to Brooks. Good for eight or nine yards. They're going to mark him down at the 15-yard line. It'll be second down and two. And that was Mitch Kidd who handed off. We are now seeing the Liberty's other quarterback. Very capable, very, very talented young quarterback. But I'm looking to see where, where Tyree Adams is if he's just sitting out for a series or two. Second down and two. Kid takes a snap and hands it off to Brooks. Brooks goes outside. Plenty of room. 10-5. It looked like he hit the wall. The banners were flung. But they're going to give him the end zone. Touchdown. The banners were moving. Omaha's asking. Wasn't he out of bounds? And uh, they're not going to get the call. The argument is why Chris Perry's out there arguing. Why are those banners moving like that if he didn't touch them? Isn't that the, isn't that the wall? And now they're going to go and review. So, here we go again. We got a little delay as they go down the tunnel to check it out. Go back to that first championship game. I guess I was wrong on everything. The game was at home. Civic Auditorium before your time in <laughs> Omaha. Um, I'll give you the... The easy question or the hard question? Who coached Omaha or who coached Tennessee? Ooh, uh, the hard question, who coached Tennessee? I don't know who coached Tennessee. No, that was the easy question, actually. Oh, was it? Yeah. <laughs> head coach for Omaha, Sandy Buda, the original Omaha Beef head coach, and uh, coach for Tennessee, the guy who you're filling in here for tonight, James Kerwin. Ah. Winning the championship, beating the beef. Wow. Yeah. How does he feel about that? Oh, he loves it. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So blame him. <laughs> should bring that up next time I see him. Hey, oh, absolutely. Oh, he, he'll tell you all about it. Trust me. This we, team would have a championship if it wasn't for you. <laughs> yeah. I, I think they thought they might have a couple more chances along the way, but has not fallen that way. At the moment, it's 13-3 to for Salina. They are reviewing the last play to see if there was uh, some contact with the wall. Omaha contends there was. The banners were definitely moving. It's not because of the AC, I can tell you that, in this building here tonight. Uh, Not sure if that is on. It is a warm, hot, sticky, humid night, even indoors here at the Pizza Palace. Trying to think of the other situation in sports where where something rats you out. Like, you know, we have these dasher boards that the ads aren't printed on the pad. You know, they're hanging over them. So very easily to have them move if you touch them. And I think maybe NFL, you have a runner with black shoes yeah. and, and he hits, you know, yeah, steps base, on that white baseball, paint. Baseball, <laughs> you still have the chalk. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, I mean, that, that'll that bounce up, you know, sometimes. But NFL, I don't even think there's any chalk left. That's all into the yeah, artificial turf now. <laughs> uh, you, do they still do the shoe polish thing in baseball when the foul ball goes off the the shoe or he gets hit by a pitch if it hits the shoe and they can see the the mark oh yeah shoes on the ball (laughs) uh i don't think they do that anymore that's too much work there's a couple of dead ringers in sports i just feel like the the dasher boards at least the the style that they are here in salina would be very helpful to determining if the player was out of bounds or in play still all the replays have gone salina's way so far two for two here comes the result on the third. So they agree the runner did hit the wall, and that one will go Omaha's way. Two reversals. How about that? 
So that's probably the guy from Omaha, right, on the side? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so they wipe the touchdown off the board for the moment. 13-08 remaining first half of play. It's now first and goal, though, from the three-yard line for Salina as they are up in front seven to three. Game clock runs under 13 minutes to go. It's a running clock here in indoor football. They break the huddle, 10 on the play clock, back up to the line. They load up the near side. Kid puts the runners into motion, low snap, looks downfield, wants to throw in the end zone. It's incomplete. Risky throw there. I'm surprised. But, yeah, Mitch Kid's still in. No sign of Tyree Adams. Here comes C.J. Bivens making that long run. Schwamm. Bird was uh, the intended receiver. He had a heck of a night at a loss up at Ralston Arena last month. Seemed like he was scoring every touchdown. I believe he had three or four on that night. Second down and three. Motion once again. Mitch Kidd, play action, dances around, has some pressure, throws near side, and it is. We're waiting for the call. It's complete outside the goal line. They're going to say he was down at the one. It'll be third down and goal. It was an obstructed view from where we are located. A little bit. As Salina gets back on the ball, it's inside the one-yard line. Third down and goal for the Liberty. Lucky, too, because Bivens, man, he had a beat on Kid there. He popped him good, and he got that ball out. Probably just a split second earlier, he would have put him on the on the turf. See if uh, they give the ball to Brooks. It's Ron O'Neill will use a timeout. Play clock was down to five, and he's wondering – why that took so long to get that play in. So they'll reset the play. 11-29 remaining here in the first half. Salina trying to score for the second time tonight. It's 7-3, Liberty. The Liberty, familiar to the Champions Bowl, they have been to three in a row now, but fell in the last two to Duke City. Duke City was back-to-back CIF champions, moved on to the IFL, the Indoor Football League, and uh, right now outside of playoff consideration, their inaugural season in that league. That's too bad. Of course, Omaha, uh, former member of the IFL when it got started until they joined the CPIFL, which then morphed into the CIF when the Lone Star League merged with the CPIFL. Lone Star teams are in Texas. Yeah. Who would have thought? Catchy, huh? (laughs) All right. Out of the timeout. Third and goal. Half yard out. And Adams back in now. He is under center, and he leans forward, and he has the touchdown. That was Mitch Kidd again. Oh, was it Kidd? Oh, it was Kidd. So, yeah, he stays in, leans forward, gets his fifth rushing touchdown of the season. As Salina adds to the lead, it's 13-3. to three. And, you know, the clock runs here during the extra point. I think Ron O'Neill is actually savvy enough, it looks like it, to take his time kicking these extra points. He knows the longer the game goes, the more opportunities for Omaha to stay in it. Jimmy Allen comes in for the extra point. Right around 90% on PATs. This one is up. It's off the crossbar or the upright, and it's no good. I'll take credit for that. <laughs> Give him the little jinx there with 10.44 to go here in the first half. 13-3 to is the score. Salina Liberty out in front by 10. We'll be right back. You're listening to Champions Bowl 6. Omaha Beach Professional Indoor Football here on the Boomer Sports Network. Attention craft beer fans at Pint 9. They're committed to tradition and innovation. They stand on the tradition of brewers before them to create aroma-driven American ales and complex Belgian beers. They appreciate fine German lagers and English session ales, but they also crave the innovation of one-off batches and barrel aging. Their beers are highly fermentable and highly digestible while being scientifically sound and artfully executed. They hope you enjoy drinking their beers as much as they enjoy brewing them. Visit their website today. It's pint9brewing.com. Cheers. Yeah. 
Lakeshore back at Salina, 10.44 to go in the first half. 10 to, or 13 to three, Salina. Mitch Kidd has come in for Tyree Adams on that drive and leads the Liberty to a touchdown. Don't know if it's a coach's decision or injury. We'll see if we can find out maybe at halftime or if he returns. So Jimmy Allen puts the ball on the tee on his own goal line. He's going to put it on his left side. As Trey Dudley Giles is back deep with Deshaun Jones for the return. It's fielded by Perry. Up man. Wrong up man to get it. And he goes into the Liberty territory inside the 20 down in the 19. Very nicely done. Perry will return kicks occasionally. Actually, I'm surprised he wasn't tonight, but he gets his hands on the return as they hit him about the 15-yard line in the up position. And Omaha will have their best field position to start a drive here tonight at the Salina 19. So, here's a point. Again, you need to score. You obviously now aren't going to be able to keep selling for field goals or don't want to. As Salina's putting touchdowns on the board, it's a 10-point lead for Salina. Jackson lines up the play. Two wideouts on the top, two wideouts on the bottom. High motion out of the slots. Jackson takes a snap, quick throw. Tyler Jones complete. Inside the 15 down to the 11-yard line, good for eight yards on first down. It'll be second down and two for the Bees. Yeah, a lot of hard fighting for those yards, but, hey, sets you up with a great second down. And you wonder, we're just under 10, the pace of the game now for this Omaha offense. Tempo again as Omaha gets back on the ball quickly. Same formation, same high motion. Jackson on second down. Throws Enzo touchdown, Tyler Jones. Right up the near dasher board, and he found him. Quick drop and pass. It's complete to Tyler Jones. Big touchdown to keep Omaha in this game. It's his 12th of the season. And with 9.30 remaining, Omaha is within four. Just like that. I mean, start out with great field position. You get yourself into a second down scenario where you're open the whole playbook, and, and that happens. I mean, great job by the Omaha offense. Jeremy Reynolds comes in 32 of 42, 76% on PATs. He's one for one on field goals tonight. Here's a snap. The placement's good. The kick is Ooh. off to the left. So Jeremy Reynolds has had a pretty good couple of games, but both teams missed their extra point, and with nine minutes to go in the first half, we stand at 13 to 9. Time out on the field. We'll come right back. You're listening to Champions Bowl 6 here on the Boomer Sports Network. At Titanium, their customers are a top priority. They're passionate about the Omaha HVAC services they provide, and they want you to be comfortable with their results. They've been in Omaha heating and cooling industry long enough to know that your satisfaction is what makes their business exist. They take pride in problem solving your HVAC unit's issues, ensuring that the problems you have when they arrive at your home or business won't happen after they leave. Call them today, 402-913-0536, or visit them online, titaniumomaha.com. Whether it's small-scale digital printing projects or a high-volume, high-end offset print project, DBS Burke has the proper equipment and craftsman-level machine operators to produce your message beyond your expectations. Find out why DBS Burke is the best source for mailing services, kitting, and fulfillment, wide-format printing projects such as posters, banners, signs, and signage. Call them today, 402-455-1200, or visit dbsburke.com. McAllister's Deli is known for great food, wide variety, exceptional customer service, and its famous sweet tea. Plus, it's family friendly. Whether you're in the mood for a sandwich, spud, soup, or salad, the menu is a real winner. Oh, and if you're ever in a time crunch, there's no need to settle. McAllister's offers online and app ordering. Choose your favorites, submit the order, and head on over. Your freshly prepared meal will be ready when you need it, just how you like it. What are you waiting for? Nine minutes to go in the first half of play. Champions Bowl 6. It's the CIF Champions Indoor Football Championship game. Omaha trails the Salina Liberty 13-9. Touchdown just made the game a whole lot closer. Jeremy Reynolds will kick it back to the Liberty. As we mentioned, every drive has started 
inside the 25-yard line for Salina. We'll see if they can pin them this time. It's going to be fielded in the end zone, actually at the one-yard line, out to the 5, the 10. Another lane, 15-20. Perry misses him out to the 25-yard line into Omaha territory, down to the 23, the short field once again for Salina. And this this is one of those situations where, it, you know, that was a great kick, a great end-over-end kick. You don't see a lot of those in the world of indoor football, but he put it right where it needed to be. <laughs> and you saw a swarm down by what, the, the 13-14? And sure enough, he fights his way out for another 15 yards. It, it's just It might come down to special teams tonight. They tried the bouncers the first few kicks. That time they tried to see if they could put it in the air and set up the coverage, but same reason. Dalt. Salina will start in Omaha territory, this time at the 24-yard line, 840 and counting, 13-9, Liberty. Mitch Kidd stays in at quarterback. We have high motion on the near side. Drops back, looks to throw. Brooks on the far side, gets it, and he picks up three or four as he is tackled into the dasher board by the beef Taylor Hawkins on the hit. Well, they gave him two in, in about – three quarters there i'm surprised but uh i from this vantage point we clearly see he was down right where it was yeah about two yards makes it second down and eight liberty trying to add to a four point advantage they load up the near side high motion in between brooks on the sweep into the 20 leans forward gets another yard they mark him down about the 19 yard line good for four or five yards and it's going to be third down and four for Salina. Well, here comes another third down scenario for this Omaha defense. And, you know, you're not too close to the end of the first half yet, but you'd really like to get one back. Omaha looking at a Salina offense that's over 55% in third down efficiency. We did stop them on downs in the first quarter. Hand off to Brooks. Brooks tries to find the hole. He's not going to have the first down. Picks up about a yard as Omaha wants a hole. Carl Bivens is discussing that, but there's no flag on the play. We haven't seen many flags, just a couple false starts and illegal defenses in this game, but it's going to be fourth down and three for Salina, and the defense once again has an opportunity to stop Salina on downs. And I don't know if he slipped or got tripped up, but you, he had some room, and all of a sudden, he's down before before the yard to gain. Liberty 38% on fourth down this season, 0 for 1 tonight. They need three yards right here to continue the drive. Kid out of the gun, actually going to step up. He's going to run himself. He has room and makes a leap into the down marker. What an effort by Mitch Kidd. He jumped, looked like he's going to be a little short, and jumped literally into the marker and the wall and picks up the first down. Yeah, from here it looked like he jumped just before the marker and hit the wall where they have now the actual down marker at. That's where it looked like he was. So a first down for Salina. They're at the 14 of Omaha, approaching the six-minute mark, second quarter of play. High motion near side. A little pitch out to Brooks, and Brooks is driven into the wall as he picks up about three down to the 11-yard line. We're under six to go here in the first half. Both teams have two timeouts remaining here in the first half. As Salina takes their time, comes up to the line on second down and eight. The ball's at the 11-yard line, threatening to add to a 13-9 lead. Handoff is to Brooks. He has a little bit of room, picks up another two down to the nine-yard line of Omaha, and it'll be third down and five. I know that Jones likes to have those fresh legs on the front three for his defense, but with that run from where their bench is to where they are on the field, I don't know how fresh those legs are. Benches are in the end zones here in Salina and Omaha. They are on the sidelines in the hockey boxes. Another third down for Salina. Third down and five, kid. A little toss, a little reverse. Back to the far side and good for about two yards, maybe three. They gave it to Brooks, who pops it off to Steinwalks, coming around the other end, a little end around. Uh, they thought they were going to get the big play, but they do pick up three, but it's fourth down once again. 
And he will elect to kick it on this one. He, I mean, fourth down and two. Long two, maybe even three. And you're right, they'll send Jimmy Allen in and try to make this a seven-point game once again. Allen missed on his last extra point. He's only attempted 13 field goals on the season. Six of 13, the long of 48. This one much shorter, be about 31. Kick is up for Allen, and it is good. It's a little moral victory for the Omaha defense. 409 remaining. They hold Salina to three, and it's 16 to nine with 409 remaining here in the second quarter. Yeah, and here we go. This is a big test for this Omaha special teams unit because there will be a kickoff, and that's where they really need a spark. And then their offense. Four minutes left, plenty of time, and then you do get the kickoff coming out of the half. So this will be, in my opinion, possibly where the championship is decided is what they do right now in these next four minutes and nine seconds. And you have to wonder, based on the field position they get after this kickoff, if they'll try to keep running that up-tempo because you may want to try to get a nice long drive and, as you yeah. said, get that double possession, take as much time off the clock as you can and minimize Salina's efforts. They're not moving the ball as fluidly as they normally do. They're, you know, they are only got 16 points. That's pretty low for Salina so far. But they've had great starting field position, which has helped. I think that might have been Salina's shortest drive of the game because when they got that interception, they didn't score off it. So where they were and how long they took for a field goal, that, that might have been the shortest time that offense has been out there. Stay tuned at halftime. Ricky Burtz, owner of the Beef, will come up and join us here at Champions Bowl 6. Allen with the kickoff. High end over end kick. It goes over the back wow. wall. And that's a big break for Omaha as he was trying to get as close to the wall as he could, but it went over. And that gives it to Omaha at the 25-yard line. Big break for the beef. And I, I held my breath as I saw Deshaun Jones look like he was getting himself in position to, to return that from as far back in the end zone as you can be. And then he lets it go right over his shoulder like a matrix move. And I was like, hey, there you go. The walls are slightly higher here than they are in some of the other arenas and hockey boards. Uh, they do not play hockey in this arena. And uh, I thought that might keep that ball in play, but it hit right off the top of the wall and went out. End result, Omaha gets a start at the 25-yard line. Good field position for Omaha. Base formation on offense. Pargo in motion with Jones Jr. Jackson rolls out, looks downfield, throws into coverage. It's incomplete. He wanted Tyler Jones, but there's pretty good coverage going down that near sideline up against the dasher board, too. Nowhere for Jones to escape to, and it goes incomplete. It's second down and 10. I like the call there. I didn't like the coverage downfield, but I like that he took a shot. You know, uh, why not? Uh, you're at the midway point of the field because of the kick out of bounds, and you've got some time. It's first down. See, see what they're doing. They'll load up the far side this time of the formation. Pargo and Tyler Jones on the line. Here's the high motion on the far side. Jackson sees the blitz and has complete inside the five. Touchdown, wow. Omaha. How about that, Norman Darden? The 25-yard reception and touchdown as he scores his seventh touchdown of the season, and the Beef somehow are one point away from tying this game up. And the smallest guy on that whole team with one of the biggest plays in the championship so far. I mean, that was well done by Darden. I, I don't know if you lose track of him out there. Five <laughs> foot seven. <laughs> I'm taller than him. Came up with that, barely. 302 remaining. Jeremy Reynolds with the extra point to tie it up. And it's blocked. It's blocked. Latimer's going to chase it down. They could return this as it will go into the boards and die. So. Omaha had a chance to tie it up on the extra point and doesn't. But they're within a point. 3.02 remaining here in the first half. It's 16 to 15 here in Champions Bowl 6. I think uh, I think we discussed coming into the playoffs. We thought last week's Omaha Sioux City game might be the best game of the playoffs. Oh, it was uh, great. And but I mean before the before when we saw the matchups. 
Uh, but Omaha is coming down here and done something they have not done on their last two trips. We talked about 2019 when they came down here and uh, spotted Salina 21 points. It wasn't much better earlier this season on week two when Omaha came down here and visited Salina Liberty. Yeah, there's. I noticed when I was doing some research, there's a lot of streaks going into this game. Uh, the home team has won every Champions Bowl. Yep. And then, of course, Salina did not lose at home. And you mentioned that Omaha was not able to win against Salina this season or the or the last time that they found themselves down here in a big matchup. So there's a lot of streaks. Of what, but some You have to think mathematically one of them's got to end. <laughs> well, we said there's a lot of things going in the Liberty's way. When you look at the stats, a lot of them favorable to the Liberty. Some unbelievable numbers, but Marvin Jones said in the pregame, whoever plays the best tonight. We've seen weird things in this sport throughout the years. Wouldn't put it past to see anything here tonight. Bouncing ball on the kickoff. Brooks ends up with it at the 14, dances around, tries to find a spot. There's a 25. He's driven the wall, and Salina once again starts in Omaha territory. Yeah, and, you know, <laughs> we have two missed PATs and then a lot of just great starting field position for Salina. And then you had your first great starting position on a kickoff for Omaha. Like, this is coming down to the special teams unit for both of these squads. Well, it's games like these where those little things are going to determine it. Throughout the season, Salina's done a lot of those little, th- little things very well. Omaha, quite frankly, has had their moments. We'll see what comes down to tonight. 240 and counting. Salina starts at the 23. And Kid stays wow. in. He's tackled in the backfield. That's Keontae Shavy, or excuse me, that is uh, Gibson Zaya who came around and brought him down for a three-yard loss. Leads the league in sacks. Added another one. I'm sure he appreciates that it's on the championship stage. Twelfth sack of the season. Oof. And that one backs him up to the 25-yard line as we approach two minutes to go in the first half. Salina does have two timeouts. They have a one-point lead, two wideouts on the far side. Wideouts in high motion. And here's a pass. It is incomplete. I caught a glimpse of number six, E.J. Hamilton, down here. He was jumping up and down. The guy had a handful of jersey, but thankfully the pass is incomplete. But you hope the officials can at least, you know, see see some stuff yeah, like we that. We haven't seen any holding calls <laughs> no. or anything like that. Uh, we did see in that. Omaha game, at least last week, they did let him play yep. uh, a lot in some instances there. And that's kind of the championship or playoff game mentality. I, I think Haran O'Neill is going to use a second timeout, and he does. He calls it with 126 remaining here in the first half. He's going to have third down and long when we come back. One point lead for the Liberty, 16 15. You're listening to Champions Bowl 6 Omaha Beat Professional Indoor Football on the Boomer Sports Network. Ozzy Sports Bar and Grill, it's a locally owned, family-friendly sports bar striving to be everything a neighborhood spot should be. Enjoy their delicious homemade food and casual atmosphere while you watch your favorite games or just catch up with family and friends. Whether it's group gathering, business meeting, dining by the huge open-air patio, partying with all your friends and family, they do it all. At Ozzy's Roadhouse, they want their place to be there anytime you need it. Visit them today online, ozzysroadhouse.com or in person, 127th Westport Parkway in La Vista. Salina uses their second time out of the first half. They have a one-point lead, 16-15, to 15, but the ball's at the 25-yard line, and they face third down and 12. Mitch Kidd at quarterback in relief for Salina. High motion once again. Kidd drops back, has time, but it's knocked oh, around. Wow. That pass was off target. Malcolm McCoy got the first fingers on it. Started the tip drill. Omaha had a shot to bring it in, but could not. It'll be fourth down and long. And what's O'Neill going to do here? Well, he's got one of the best kickers, if not the best kicker in the league, in Jimmy Allen. I, I this mean, would be about a 40-yard attempt. He's been good for up to 48 yards this season, but we've reached the one-minute warning with 
60 seconds remaining here in the first half, so they can think about it during this timeout. We'll be right back for the rest of the first half. You're listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football on the Boomer Sports Network. Beef fans, have you tried CBD products yet? Well, if you haven't, now's the time. And our friends over at Peaceful Roads, they're the ones to try it with. They have one goal, and that's to strive to create the highest quality CBD products available. Whether you purchase them online or at the local store, they pride themselves in offering products at a price people can afford, allowing you to take full advantage of what CBD has to offer. Find a store today. Visit their website at PeacefulRoads.com. That's PeacefulRoads.com. Do you currently live in a rental property? You're looking for a new rental house. Just remember, all property management companies are not the same. Do you want the phone to be answered when you call the customer service line? Do you want them to fix those things that break in your kitchen, in your bathroom? Do you not want to be overcharged on your security deposit when you move out? Do other guys do that? We don't do that. Crown Property Management, they're part of Keller Williams Greater Omaha. Check them out today. Experienced property management company. Check out crownmanagementomaha.com for your next rental. When looking for your next rental, just look for them. One minute warning here in Salina, and they will send Jimmy Allen out for the long field goal. It's be a 39 yard attempt. His long on the season is 48, and Omaha is going to use a timeout. You trying to ice him? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. I think you may want to have those uh, timeouts get the ball back here with under a minute to go but Marvin Jones uses his second timeout he has one remaining as Salina does as well and the special teams unit is going to stay out for the Liberty as Jimmy Allen I don't know if Jimmy Allen has the kind of shoes you pump up, but he reached down like he was pumping up his kicking shoe. 7-14 <laughs> of 14 on field goals this year, including one of one tonight. This one much longer. 39 yards, 48 yards. That's a pretty good boot he had earlier in the 2021 campaign. It's right off the CIF logo, those are kind of plastic decals on the field. See if that affects footing at all as Brooks is on the hold. Allen eyes it. And here's the 39-yard field goal attempt. The kick is up, and it is good. Wow. Jimmy Allen had some uh, direction back to the Omaha bench. I think Len Marvin Jones know that timeout didn't work if that's what he's trying to do. As Salina has a four-point lead with 56 seconds remaining. It's 19-15 Liberty. So, last two possessions for Salina, field goals. That's obviously not what we were expecting on the Salina offense as, you know, that was not in the red zone. But, gosh, we see a lot of touchdowns from this offense. And, uh, as we mentioned, it's only the eighth field goal in 13 games for Salina this year. And I think... Coach Jones is okay with this. He's probably not happy about it. Every defensively-minded guy in the game wants a shutout. But it's the championship. He knows this opponent. He wants to slow him down because he knows you're just not going to stop him. You're just not. So if you can slow him down, field goals, why not? And as you laid out earlier, this becomes a very big possession for Omaha. If they could get any points with 56 seconds remaining here, in the end of the first half, and the fact that they will get the ball first in the second half as well, trailing 19-15. to 15. Allen's going to line it up right in the middle of the field, and it's a high end over end kick. He keeps it in this time. Jones brings it out to the 5, the 10, has a little room. 15 gets stacked up at the 17-yard line, and that's where Omaha will start with 49 seconds remaining in the first half and one timeout. In the world of indoor, when you're talking about a 50-yard field, I mean, that's about starting at the 35-yard line right there. So it's uh, not terrible, not great, just right. Well, Omaha's offense is built for the one-minute offense. (laughs) That they are. As uh, running plays have been trick plays for Marvin Jones in the second half of this season. 
Beef 8 and 4 on the season. Salina Liberty 11 and 1. It's all for the CIF Championship. 49 seconds left here in the first half. High motion. Jackson drops back, looks. Tyler Jones complete near side. Puts the ball over the wall. That's out of bounds. We have traditional football timing rules after the one minute warning, so that stops the clock. 45 seconds to go. Great awareness by Ty Jones there to get where he needed to be quickly and reach the ball over. Five yards on the gain. The ball's at the beef, 22. Second down and five. Jackson empty. Two wideouts on each side. Tyler Jones and Jones Jr. in slot high motion. Jackson's going to dance around, and he's going to run it. Wow. He gets a first down as he gets his longest run of the season (laughs) of nine yards. (laughs) Tell you what. His longest run before that was six. Marvin Jones, after the game last week, said, you see how bad Andrew Jackson won that game? He actually ran. He wants this one even more, apparently. Clock down to 30 seconds. Fresh set of downs. Jackson looks downfield, and there's contact. There's the flags. It's going to be a penalty against the Salina defense as they are trying to hit Tyler Jones going up the near sideline. Yeah, he's he does not run often, and... Uh, he ran. I I don't even know if he hesitated. I think he looked quickly and then running <laughs> took off. So we'll see if this is a hold or if it's a pass interference. It's gonna be a legal contact. So that's gonna be five yards and a first down instead of half the distance, which would have been from there. So it's first down at the 14-yard line. 26 seconds to go in the half. Omaha has one timeout remaining. They trail 19-15, to 15, looking to get points going into the locker room. Jackson will line up empty, two wide outs each side. The slot receivers again in high motion. Jackson, quick drop, pump fake, now dances around, nobody open. Looks into the end zone. He throws it away. Salina wants a hold on that offensive line. I think they may have a case, but we've seen a lot of that here tonight without any flags being thrown either way. Oh, there was a flag. I didn't see it come out. Oh, I see where it is. It's right where you really can't see it on the Oh, it's the in their logo. There. It blended into their logo. <laughs> so it was a hold. And that's good backup Omaha with 19 seconds to go. That'll be a factor if Omaha wants to try a field goal to end the half. Jeremy Reynolds' long field goal on the season is 39 yards. That'd be about what it is from right here. 19 seconds to go. First down and 20 for Omaha. They're at the 24-yard line of Salina. Jackson drops back. Here comes a pass rush. Dances out of it again. Throws to the end zone into double coverage. And out of play. Incomplete. 11 seconds remaining here in the first half. It's second down and 20. Omaha does have that timeout. Probably has a chance for one more play if they want to go for that end zone. Marvin Jones might be telling them if there's something underneath, get it. We'll call the timeout and see if we put three on the board. But kicking has gotten tricky for Omaha as they've missed an extra point and a field goal. 11 seconds to go. You hear the crowd into it here at the Pizza Palace. Jackson out of the empty. Same formation. Looked like Omaha left early. No flag on the play. He's getting rushed around. He needs to get rid of it. Throws it down the end zone, and it's off the fingertips of Rashad Fargo. Oh, that would have been a great catch, but it did hit his hands, but he couldn't bring it down. Four seconds to go. Marvin Jones is looking at his kicker, says, you want to try it? You got 39 yards. Do you have it in you? Of course, he wants to. And they're opening the door. I think they're going to let him. Play clock's down to 15. Marvin Jones already saying he's going to use his timeout and let them get the special teams unit on the field. So Omaha uses their last timeout of the first half. They trail by four. It's 19 to 15, but they're going to let Jeremy Reynolds have a shot at a 39-yard field goal, which would tie his season long on the season. That was up in Sioux City early this season. 
You have to worry, though, if he tries to drive this. We've seen that. And a pretty good rush from Salina. You want to make sure nothing real bad happens where they can block it and return it, and they get points on the board going into halftime. Yeah, it'll be a, a real good test for Reynolds down there. Who, you know, why, why wouldn't you want a moment in the championship? I mean, this could be his later on. You look back, man, that one that they they got later, you know, just before the half, and not bad for kickers because they, quite frankly, aren't really expecting you to make this. If you do, it's great. So he'll get to take a big swing at it. Perron O'Neill, though, does have a timeout. We'll see if he elects to make Reynolds think about it a little bit. And he will. It's a little gamesmanship. <laughs> As he'll get another uh, 30 seconds or so to think about it. We saw the placement out there. This will be a 39-yard attempt from the Omaha 18-yard line. Omaha looking for their first championship. Second appearance in Champions Bowl play. Champions Bowl three falling to the Texas Revolution. Really, uh, that score ended up close, but Texas was in control of that game throughout as Omaha had to work their way into that game with some road playoff wins. So out of the timeout, here we go. Four seconds to go. This should expire the clock as Reynolds will kick it from his own 18-yard line. This is a 39-yard attempt to pull the beef within one. Jones on the hold. It's down. The kick is up. It's got the distance, but it's going to go wide Uh. to the right. So what a first half here in Salina. As we reach the midway point of Champions Bowl 6, the Liberty have led the entire game, but it's been close. Liberty out in front, 19-15. to We'll come back with our halftime show. You're listening to Champions Bowl 6, Zoma B Professional Indoor Football on the Boomer Sports network cell phone repair with five locations lake manawa 79th and dodge 148th and maple 168th and center and 24th and cornhusker expert repairs done fast gadgets play a major role in your personal and professional life when your phone tablet or laptop breaks you need professional service fast that's where we come in is your phone dying too soon or are you constantly hooking up to your charger the experts at cell phone repair can get it replaced 30 minutes or less so you can stay connected stop in today to one of our five locations or find us online at cellphonerepair.com CBR, bringing your gadgets back to life. At Roberts Nursery, they understand there is a wide range of companies to choose from for your nursery needs. However, they pride themselves on being unique and focused on long-term customer relationships. Whether it's a custom landscape, fertilization of your lawn, or even a simple perennial purchase, Roberts Nursery is here to provide you the finest products and highest quality service possible. To learn more about their services, Visit them online, robertsnursery.com, or visit them on 156th Street, just north of Fort. If you're moving to or from Omaha and you're looking to hire the best local moving company, look no further than King's Moving. Whether you're buying a new home in the metro area or you need to move a commercial business from one location to another, or maybe you're moving in or out of an apartment, lots of stairs, or an assisted living center, They're licensed, insured, and highly trained moving experts. They can help. Call them today at 402 676-0719 676-0719 or visit their website at Kings Moving, the number 4 you.com. At Schrock Innovations, they're proud to be the best in computer repair services for Omaha, Lincoln, Papillion, and Des Moines. Computer repair is a passion for the technicians at Schrock Innovations, and they know your time is valuable and you need your technology fixed right away the first time. And they are proud to be a leader in computer repair as well. Call them today, 402-884-0880. Or visit them at SchrockInnovations.com for locations near you. Hey, B fans. Our official car rental company, Budget Car and Truck Rental of Nebraska, has convenient locations throughout Omaha, Lincoln, and Grand Island to serve you. Budget is locally owned and operated. And now by joining their free loyalty program, Better Way Rewards, you will earn free rentals with every trip you take behind the wheel of a qualified budget rental. Visit BudgetNebraska.com now to sign up and to book a reservation. Use the promo code BEEF for a 20% discount and never miss a BEEF game. 
Hey, isn't Scores the only bowling alley in Ralston? Well, fact is, we may never actually know for sure. But what we do know is that Scores has been your headquarters for fun right in the middle of Ralston for decades. They offer something for everyone in the group, including bowling, darts, kino, and pool. Enjoy a night out with their full bar and have fun with your friends. Visit them today, right in the middle of downtown Ralston, right up the street from Ralston Arena, 7602 Main Street, or online, scores, S-C-O-R-Z, sportscenter.com. <laughs> Hungry for a quality fried fish meal? Head over to Luffy's Fried Fish, located off of 72nd Street here in Omaha. Luffy serves a variety of appetizing dishes that will satisfy your hunger. Enjoy your meal and leave fully satisfied. Ooh, 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 ooh. Luffy's Fried Fish, proud sponsor of the Omaha Bee. Welcome back to Salina, Kansas. It's the Tony's Pizza Event Center, home of Champions Bowl 6. It's the Salina Liberty and the Omaha Beef. Beef heavy underdogs coming to the game as we discussed throughout, trailing 19 to 15 in the owner of the Omaha Beef fan favorite up here. Ricky Burtz, uh, I'll just be honest, we've had discussions all week. Uh, I mean, we've talked with coaches and everything. This is probably not exactly what we were expecting, the kind of game we're in right now. No, not at all, especially given the fact, Todd, that uh, we have, we have, it's not like we played a perfect game at all or anything like that. Uh, had some mixed, uh, some miscues on uh, special teams, you know. Had a, a touchdown pass just go off of Pargo's fingertips down there on a second down there in the end zone that Drew threw up. You know, I mean, honestly, I mean, because I had a perfect view of it. If it would have been like, been like a half an inch up more, he would have pulled that thing in for a touchdown and would have been going over the lead at halftime. But, hey, you know, um, I take comfort. It's a, it's a one-score game, and like I said, we have not played our best offensively or defense. The defense has played phenomenal, don't get me wrong, and uh, I think they got a, a, fortuitous, a, a fortuitous bounce, whatever that word is, yeah. on their first touchdown of the game. I mean, Brooks fumbles it, and the ball goes forward in, in the end zone, and they recover it. But, uh, I mean, hey, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I like where we're sitting at right well, now. Well, you know, you mentioned a couple things that we discussed before the game that uh, really haven't seen this year. That's the line of putting the ball on the, on the turf a couple times despite not losing it. Uh, you know, they usually take pretty good care of the football. And number two, you know, Omaha on offense, it hasn't been spectacular by any means. You you mentioned there's room to improve, but they have not turned the ball over uh, offensively as well. And that's what we talked about. They're going to have to play a game where they didn't give a lot of extra possessions to Salina and then hopefully get a little a little help the other way as well. And that's that's kind of where we're at right now. No, I agree with you completely. You know, and it's just it's a, hey, a um, couple small things here or there. You know, I mean, gosh, we uh, – we had that uh, play down on the what the one yard line or a half yard line or whatever had to settle for an extra point or I'm sorry I apologize a field goal on that play but uh, you know like I said uh, I know that Coach Jones has got those guys uh, laser focused coming into the game and uh, you know I talked to Richard Teeman earlier our guys are not this moment isn't too big for them they are very calm they had a lot of composure and everything else. Even when things aren't going our way on the football field, a couple bad breaks here and there. I mean, I'm down there in the box, and the guys are doing a phenomenal job just staying focused on what's going on and taking it one play at a time, and that's a testament to them and the coaching staff. Talk about what the attitude and mood was with the players. They're pretty loose coming in this game. I mean, they, you know, as we mentioned, they really didn't feel like they had a lot to lose, uh, and obviously the big underdogs out here just come out and play their game, see what happens. Well, exactly. You know, I mean, gosh, I mean, I think you talk to some people, some actions, this game's already over and decided. So, hey, we just happened to show up just to make an appearance or something. But, hey, um, no, I apologize a, for saying that, by the way. Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> it wasn't anybody from us. But, hey, no, hey, just, we're going to show up. We're going to try to play our game and uh, hopefully come away with the W. You know, it's a it's a one possession game, like I said. Uh, end of the season. There's supposed to be a season next year. Supposed to be a season next year. That's always the plan. (laughs) uh, Let's talk about what's coming up for 2022. Uh, I believe you could get tickets already. Absolutely. You know, uh, we're actually already begun the process of uh, doing uh, season ticket renewals for 2022. Um, Unbelievable price. It is $98 for the season for adults, $84 for kids. That $84 ticket special is good for any price level that we have. And uh, we've gotten a very, very strong response from our season ticket holders already. And, uh, no, we're just looking forward to building on the success that we have and kind of take it one day at a time. Let's talk about after this game. I believe on Monday uh, we're going to have another fan event to close out the season. Absolutely. You know, um, we're going to kind of promote it to everybody here uh, after the conclusion of the game. But, uh, you know, win or lose, we're going to go on ahead and uh, have a farewell for the guys over at Firewater Bar and Grill, 6 o'clock on Monday 
Mario, the staff over there, have been a fantastic supporter and sponsor of ours. But, you know, I mean, uh, just, it's an open invitation to any fans, family members, sponsors, anybody wants to come on out. You know, these guys, I mean, we're incredibly proud of this team, and I know the fans are as well. And, and uh, Todd, I mean, our fans are representing and making noise, you know. I mean, yeah, they, they, are making, them down here. they are making a presence, you know. But, uh, hey, he wants to stop on down. You know, we're going to actually be uh, giving away some team awards. Actually, the league award announcement will be coming out as well during really? that. So. Um, got to keep my uh, lips sealed on that one. Uh, who oh, won what? And oh, everything. you know something. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I might have a little huh. bit of an insight on that. How about so, that? So, no, it should be an exciting time uh, down you there. Say it. Nobody's listening. Nobody's listening. Uh, <laughs> I have a hard time believing that. So, But, hey, but speaking of people listening, though, this day I want to give a shout-out to Pat and the staff there at Boomer. You know, uh, they've been phenomenal partners. You know, came on board with us for 2020, which was going to be an exciting year. Of course, we know how that turned out for everybody, but uh, they came back and uh, looking forward to building that partnership and building what we're doing as an organization for the uh, city of Omaha and the surrounding area. It's been a uh, it's been a fun ride, and uh, if this is any indication of where the team's going, uh, hopefully we're gonna have some good action next year as well. You want to get those season tickets if you can, and then Monday night at the Firewater. Boy, if the second half is as good as the first half. Uh, you got a pretty good seat for it, and it's gonna be, I thought it was going to be hard to top last week's game, but who knows? You know, hey, there's still uh, a lot can happen in a half of football. Uh, it's going to be all about the adjustments that uh, both coaching staffs make. Um, hey, you know, I know Marvin does a phenomenal job, and uh, Coach O does a fantastic job as well. Uh, it's one of the things they're known for. So we get the ball first. Uh, we'll come out and see what we can do. Uh, that would be a big moment if we can get some points on the board, though, that first possession. That's the owner, Ricky Birch, joining us here at halftime. When we come back, we'll take a look at some of the stats and recap the first half of play. You're listening to Omaha Beef. Champions Bull 6 here on the Boomer Sports Network. See the Trainer offers a full line of in-stock bracing home health and rehabilitation products. Whether your pain results from a chronic condition or an acute injury, they're dedicated to improving your quality of life. Their knowledgeable staff will do their best in assisting you in selecting the appropriate product to best fit your needs. In-stock products for orthopedic, sports medicine, rehabilitation, home health, and patient education. Visit See the Trainer. They've got you covered. Visit them today, 131st and West Dodge Road, or online at seethetrainer.com. Comfort Inn and Suites on 70th and Grover's Omaha's Freshest Hotel with a great central location just completed a total hotel renovation. They feature rooms and suites that include high-speed internet access, free full hot-cooked breakfast daily. They feature the on-site fire water grill. It's the home of the Omaha Beef Coaches Show on Monday nights, serving local favorites daily. Hotel is located just off I-80 at 72nd Street, within minutes to several attractions and businesses, including the Furniture Mart, UNO, Horseman's Park, Funplex, Ralston Arena, and also the new Baxter Arena. The hotel is located with a short drive, CenturyLink, Henry Dorley Zoo, downtown Omaha, and Omaha Zeppeli Airfield. Also, if you're visiting for the College World Series, the Berkshire Hathaway meeting, Maha Music Festival, Taste of Omaha, Nebraska Balloon and Wine Festival, Jazz on the Green, Shakespeare on the Green, or any of those, you'll find the Comfort Inn centrally located within minutes of each one of these. Make your reservations today. Call them, 531-213-4085, or book online, choicehotels.com. The hottest investments around right now are in real estate, but once you purchase the rental property, you need to make sure you manage it right. Crown Property Management, they will help. Many property management companies are not proactive when managing your rentals. The end result? More repairs, more fees, more cost to you because of their lack of management. These aren't property managers, they're rent collectors. Crown Property Management will make sure that your dream investments don't become your nightmares. End result? More money in your pocket. Contact us today. CrownManagementOmaha.com. When I hired Bathfitter, I got a new bathtub that I love. It's made with the same quality materials they used in luxury hotels. It's great. Even my mom thinks so. I love your new tub, sweetie. Trouble is, when she visits, she thinks she's staying in a five-star hotel. Could I get fresh towels? Yes, mom. <laughs> mom. From luxury hotels to homeowners, Bathfitter exceeds expectations. Transform your bathroom in as little as one day. Visit bathfitter.com to learn more and book your free in-home consultation. Hey, B fans, get ready for those road games. We got to pimp our cars out before you go to Salina, Sioux City, Wichita, wherever. Take your car to InPhase Audio. They can put LED lightings. They can put big old speakers for those big tailgates that the B fans love to have. Radar detector. Trust me, we were driving through Belleville, Kansas, back from Salina at 2 a.m. in the morning. You need the radar detector. You want to put it in your car. You want to look cool. You want to go to InPhase Car Audio. Visit their website, coincidentally, InPhaseCarAudio.com. Or visit their store. It's at 134th and L Street. It's in Phase Car Audio. 
Nebraska Orthopedic and Sports Medicine. They strive to be a center of excellence for orthopedics and sports medicine. They're also the official doctors of the Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football Team. They're a group of board-certified orthopedic physicians, many of whom have had fellowships or trained in subspecialty areas. Their physicians have trained among some of the top medicine experts and training facilities in the country. They place a great deal of value on each and every opportunity they have to assist patients regain their quality of life they deserve. Call them today, 402-488-3322. Back at the Pizza Palace, it's Champions Bowl 6. It's a championship game of Champions Indoor Football. Omaha Beef and the Salina Liberty. Liberty out in front, 19-15. to 15. As Liberty scored first, it took advantage of good field position. Ed Smith finished off the drive. Three-yard run, recovering a fumble in the end zone. Extra point was good, 7-0. Salina stayed that way until early on in the second quarter. Jeremy Reynolds from 20 yards out puts the Omaha Beef on the scoreboard after getting down to the one-yard line but could not convert. 7-3, to three, Salina. Mitch Kidd, he comes in, finishes off a drive on the quarterback keeper for 11-15 to go in the second quarter. Extra point, no good. Off the upright, 13-3, to three, Salina. Omaha responds quickly. A minute and a half later, Tyler Jones takes advantage of good field position. An 11-yard touchdown pass from Andrew Jackson. Omaha misses the extra point. It's a 13-9 game. Midway through the second quarter, actually just over four minutes to go, Jimmy Allen, he puts one up from 21 yards out. Lead back to seven for Salina. Omaha, though, one play later, make that two plays later, starting at the 25-yard line. One pass, Norman Darden, 25 yards from Andrew Jackson. Good for a touchdown. The extra point to tie things up, no good, 16-15 Salina. And then Jimmy Allen, after the one-minute warning, good from 40 yards out to give Salina 19-15 advantage. Jeremy Reynolds could not connect on a field goal as time expired on the first half. Just a reminder, you're listening to KOBM Omaha 94.5 FM, 1420 AM, and on the Internet, MIBoomerRadio.com and on the My Boomer Radio app from the App Store. Todd Walkenhorst, Richard Tiemann, Nick Burris back in network control, Tom Corridor, offside support, Champions Bowl 6. We'll take a look at the first half stats when we come back. You're listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football here on the Boomer Sports Network. At Titanium, their customers are a top priority. They're passionate about the Omaha HVAC services they provide and they want you to be comfortable with their results. They've been in Omaha heating and cooling industry long enough to know that your satisfaction is what makes their business exist. They take pride in problem solving your HVAC unit's issues, ensuring that the problems you have when they arrive at your home or business won't happen after they leave. Call them today, 402-913-0536, or visit them online, titaniumomaha.com. Mr. Porky Butts, Blaine Hunter, he grew up barbecuing in South Texas from a very young age. He was helping his dad check in the temps of fires as soon as he could help. The passion that would happen in the world of low and smoke pit smoking. Over 27 years of experience combined with culinary education from Johnson & Wales and FBTC culinary schools, he started competing professionally in the barbecue circuit in 2013. Five short years later, he's accumulated one of the most impressive resumes on the barbecue circuit across the country. You have to try it today. 154th just north of Maple and at PorkyButtsBBQ.com. Realtor Bree Beck with Berkshire Hathaway. Bree grew up in the state of Nebraska and graduated from UNO with her bachelor's in marketing and management. She started her career in the real estate industry as a marketing specialist for realtors all over the country. Bree is an avid lover of the Omaha beef and a former prime dancer. This lover of wine, cheese, dogs, and Husker football will leverage her expertise to help you accomplish your real estate goals. Call Bree today, 402-578-1678, or visit her online at letsbreereal.com. Even when a big game isn't on, Jersey Sports Bar, Grill, and Kino doubles as a comfortable neighborhood bar with an aural entertainment provided by state-of-the-art Bose Sound System with a digital jukebox accessing over a quarter million songs. Jersey Sports Bar, Grill, and Kino offers over 20 local and international beers on tap and dozens more by the bottle. 
full liquor and wine selection as well. Live Kino, where you can win up to $50,000 in cash, leather Kino chairs, darts, video games, and a staff that prides itself on prompt, friendly, indulgent service. It sets them apart from the -the run-of-the-mill sports bars. See for yourself. 501 Olsen Drive in Papillion. Halftime almost over here. Champions Bowl 6, the line of Liberty out in front of Omaha Beef, 19-15. to 15. Omaha will get the ball first to start the second half, but let's take a look at the first half statistics. Omaha actually leading Salina in first down, 7-5. to five. Third down efficiency, we talked about that being an issue for Omaha. One of three on the night, that's about their average. Salina, though, below average as they are 33%, two of six. Fourth down efficiency. 50% for Salina as they are one of two. Omaha has not tried a fourth down. Total plays almost even. Total yards, 95 for Omaha, 70 for Salina. 86 of those through the air for the beef. And nine on the ground. Salina a little more balanced attack as they have 70 yards, 22 passing, 48 rushing. So Omaha has done a good job of holding Mitch Kidd in check as he came in for relief of Tyree Adams. A couple minutes away, we come back, we will have the second half kickoff. You're listening to Champions Bowl 6 right here on the Boomer Sports Network. The Down Syndrome Alliance of the Midlands is committed to connecting those touched by Down Syndrome through education, advocacy, and support. DSA is a nonprofit agency founded in 1999 and based right here in Omaha. They are parents, advocates, educators, and medical professionals. DSA is affiliated with the National Down Syndrome Society, the National Down Syndrome Congress, the Global Down Syndrome Foundation, and Down Syndrome Affiliates in Action. Call a day for information, 531-375-5791, or visit dsamidlands.org. Solarion conducts clinical research studies for pharmaceutical and biotechnology companies for investigational medicines currently in research and development to treat a wide variety of illnesses and conditions. You can be a part. Find out more. Call them today, 866-445-7033, or visit Celerion online at their website. It's helpresearch.com. We've all heard the old saying, you're the company that you keep. And in everything they do at Valley Marine, their goal is to be the company that you keep, that helpful friend you call with a problem, that place you just drop by to say hello and share a laugh. Their dealership is comprised of an incredible team of people, all boaters like yourselves, with the common purpose to give you, the customer, the very best on water. It's simple, really. The golden rule. Treat others the way you would like to be treated. Call today, 402-704-4961, or visit their website at valleymarine.net. Back in Salina, Kansas. Second half ready to go. Champions Bowl 6. The Liberty have led the whole way, but it's been a close game. We are at 19-15 to to start the second half of play. Omaha will get the ball first here to start half number two. Where did you go, Richard? We lost you there. <laughs> I had to go and fulfill some halftime duties with the Omaha Beef and check in with their fans. They're about as nervous as I am. I told them... You know, if this game continues the way that it has, I may start pulling my hair. And you and I could look very similar by the end of this one. Oh, that's your wish, I'm sure. (laughs) We're ready for half number two. Allen with the ball on the tee. Omaha has two back deep, including Trey Dudley Giles. And looks like uh, this will be actually bobbled, but picked up by Jones. Jones to 10 to 15. He's got room. 25, 20, kicker. 15, 10, 5. Coast to coast to start the second half. Deshaun Jones' first touchdown kick return of the season and the first kickoff return for the Beef in 2021. Perfect timing, too. How many times have we seen a bobble turn into something like that? There was that Prohaska return way back, and it didn't look like he was going to get anywhere with that. So, wow, way to go, Deshaun Jones. What a way to start the second half. The Beef have their first lead of the game, 21-19. They need one more player down on the field for this extra point. And they're going to have to hope they reset the play clock. That's a benefit for the Beef. They're missing a lineman as Omaha returns the opening drive of the second half. All the way and take the lead. Here's Reynolds for the extra point. 
High snap, place was down, kick is up, and he missed again to the oh, left. Wow. Jeremy Reynolds has missed back to back extra points and a field goal. And we have talked about uh, the one little issue of Jeremy Reynolds is once he misses, it's, I mean, he's a very good kicker, but sometimes once he misses, it's tough for him to get back in that mode. Yeah, there were three teams in the league that had consistency at the kicking position Salina. Dodge City, and then Omaha. And Dodge City, their kicker, Brett Mathis, he got hurt. He missed the game. But Reynolds, he was creeping up there in the stats, hanging with these guys who are otherwise very good kickers. But, yeah, you bring up a great point. Once he misses one, it's like he's just got to get it out of his mind and go out there and just knock the next one through. He has not done that, though, this year. And we'll see if that affects some decisions throughout the rest of this game for Marvin Jones. As you can see the frustration by the head coach as that extra point was missed. That's two now, and it's going to be a two-point lead instead of, well, four, obviously. And if you know anything about football, you know what the difference between a two-point lead and a four-point lead is. Don't want to leave those points on the board or on the field against a team like Salina. So Salina's going to get the ball back. Reynolds will kick it off. 13.50 13.50 to go here in the third quarter. Omaha on top for the first time in Champions Bowl 6. Low line drive kick. Nice bounce off against the back wall. They'll have to chase it down, bring it out to the 5, the 10, and good coverage. they got to bring him down. Hawkins is there, and then they push him back. Best coverage on the kick tonight <laughs> as Salina starts with their worst field position at the 19. You say the 19 and worst field position starting. (laughs) That's really saying something about Salina. So Salina has struggled to find passing yards in that first half as there's a 2-to-1 ratio on the ground. As Salina will start their first drive of the second half going right to left on your Boomer radio dial. And... First down at the 19. Here's a snap, and we have a quarterback change as they bring Adams back in to start the second half. As they hand off to Brooks, he gets it out to the 25-yard line, good for five yards. They're going to go back with Tyree Adams, who operated the first drive for the Liberty and then took a seat to Mitch Kidd. Yeah, I don't know if it was an injury and they were just being overly cautious or if, if they just felt maybe Kidd had the hot hand. Under 13 to go. He's in now. They stack the far side. Brooks on a little sweep. They give it to him, and he gets ahead of steam. Good for six or seven yards inside the Omaha 20, down to the 18, a first down for Salina. And Tracy Brooks looks like he's playing angry now, and I don't think you want to see that. No, and it looks like he had a couple of great blockers up in front of him, too, right where the first down marker was. Otherwise, he was going to be stopped just short. Not that it mattered because that was only second down, but here we go. So a couple of runs. Passing yards were difficult for Salina against those defense backs of Omaha in the first half. We'll see if this is part of the second half adjustments as they'll run that sweep once again. They give it off. This time only good for about a yard as they're trying to do a lot of lateral motion. And get it to Brooks that way. Good for one yard. Be second down and nine. Clock continues to run. 12 minutes to go in the third quarter. He can run, but you have to get it past that defensive front three of Omaha, which, I mean, hey, if you're wanting to challenge it, go for it. But it's uh, it's not arms you want to be swallowed up into. 21-19, Omaha Salina looking to regain the lead. Second down and nine from the 17-yard line of the beef. Handoff Brooks. He dances around. He goes outside. He battles down to the 12-yard line. That will be good for about four or five yards. It'll be third down and four. So Salina systematically on their opening drive of the second half, driving down the field, starting from their own 19-yard line. They've gone to the beef 12. Approaching 11 minutes to go. Liberty trailing by two, CIF championship game here at the Pizza Palace. Adams pitches it out to Brooks. Brooks dances around. He has a first down. As he's tackled at the seven-yard line, he'll be first in goal, Liberty. So Tracy Brooks was the concern of Marvin Jones. He talked about in the pregame. And he had a night the first time Omaha played here earlier this season. Could not stop him at all. 
And it looks like Perron O'Neill may just try to see if he can ride that horse here in the second half. Pistol formation, Brooks in the back with Adams. Play action, fake. Adams keeps it. He's going to run it himself. Has the room far side. Blood is over the goal line. It's a touchdown for Salina. Wow, what a run and a big lunge as he reached that ball over the goal line. And the Liberty are back up 25-21. So Adams drove the Liberty down the field for a touchdown in this first drive and then uh, got stopped on downs, and that's when they went with Mitch Kidd. He comes in for the first drive of the second half, drives him right down the field. A 31-yard drive. Ball's down, kick is up, and... It's good. Tried and true for Jimmy Allen. So 9.38 remaining, 26-21. Salina back out in front. Those extra points, we'll see. They come back to Han Omaha as they now trail by five. 9.38 to go here in the third quarter. We'll be right back. You're listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football on the Boomer Sports Network. At McAllister's Deli, their sandwiches are piled high, their tea is famous, and their salads, soups, and giant spuds are packed with fresh and flavorful ingredients. Find a new favorite or try one of their classics. They are all handcrafted just for you. Call them today at 402-403-3207 or on the web at McAllisterDeli.com or even better yet, visit them in person, 72nd and Jones Street in Omaha. Hey, isn't Scores the only bowling alley in Ralston? Well, fact is we may never actually know for sure. But what we do know is that Scores has been your headquarters for fun right in the middle of Ralston for decades. They offer something for everyone in the group, including bowling, darts, kino, and pool. Enjoy a night out with their full bar and have fun with your friends. Visit them today, right in the middle of downtown Ralston, right up the street from Ralston Arena, 7602 Main Street, or online, scores, S-C-O-R-Z, sportscenter.com. Omaha Mattress King showroom in Millard has many mattresses right on display. They're a locally owned chain of mattress stores that offers quality at a great price. They have adjustable beds, queen mattresses, king beds, twin beds, full and king and queen mattresses as well. Fast delivery, come and see what... They have on sale. They also have great financing to get you into that mattress that you want. Visit them today online, omahamattressking.com, or in person. They're right off Millard Avenue in downtown Millard. At Schrock Innovations, they're proud to be the best in computer repair services for Omaha, Lincoln, Papillion, and Des Moines. Computer repair is a passion for the technicians at Schrock Innovations, and they know your time is valuable, and you need your technology fixed right away the first time. And they are proud to be a leader in computer repair as well. Call them today, 402-884-0880, or visit them at schrockinnovations.com for locations near you. Nine thirty-eight remaining, third quarter of play. Salina Liberty 26, Omaha Beef 21, Champions Bowl 6. Here in Salina, reminder, win or lose, Monday night, 6 o'clock, Firewater Bar and Grill will celebrate the season, postseason awards. You missed it. Ricky Burks comes up here, starts talking. Yeah, I know who won all the league awards and everything. I say, hey, let's talk about it. No. You know, I, okay. <laughs> sure. It's your job to get the inside scoop there, Secrets Todd. don't make friends. No, they don't. You know? I tried. <laughs> so I guess we'll have to wait till Monday. It's a waiting game. I, I posted mine already. You were on there. You were a recipient. I saw that. I was uh, doing something. I was out. I'll just leave it at that. About one <laughs> thirty in the morning. And all of a sudden, I see, hey, look at that. How about that? Here's the kickoff. Jones will, or uh, Adams will pick it again. Do the 10 to 15. Sean out to the 19 where he stacked up this time. After returning the last one for a touchdown. So. Omaha will start at the 19-yard line. Not bad field position, but the offense will take the field for the first time in the second half thanks to that kickoff return for a touchdown. Andrew Jackson looks at that scoreboard, though, and still finds himself trailing. That's got to get frustrating. Yeah, it's, um, you know, you got to take some time. You got to collect yourself. I noticed that Coach Jones was watching the uh, entertainment for the media timeout. I don't know if he intended to do that or just needed a mental break, but 
Who knows? Here we go. So first down for Omaha. The ball is at the 19. They trail by five. High motion. Jackson flushes outside, throws downfield, and there's contact once again. No flag. Wow. They're looking for Rashad Pargo. Looks like he got his legs tied up with Rashawn Stewart, and they do not throw a flag. It'll be second down and 10. And I'm sure Pargo really wants a big play in this one. I've seen both him and Drew do, but obviously Drew's the one throwing the ball. Pargo's the one that's got to catch the ball. We've seen them go for the big play a few times this year and connect. Pargo looking to make a difference here. Second down and 10. Here's a pass over the flat, and they can't bring it in hard in that time. Bobbled it. Had the play correctly came across the flat right up the middle and then the ball showed up he just could not bring it in luckily it didn't get tipped up and intercepted but Omaha's going to have third down and 10 this is one of those drives you better keep alive you can start to feel the momentum shifting back here in Salina Omaha wants to get this crowd out of the game They are into it right now in third and ten, under eight to go, third quarter. Jackson drops back, looks up the far sideline for Pargo. It's complete. How did he catch that ball? He was hit immediately. A huge hit, but hung on to it. It's going to be first down for Omaha from the eight-yard line. Unbelievable. Sean Stewart, I believe, was on the defense, and he's even (laughs) – He's down in the end zone. He took a hit on that. He can't. <laughs> I was surprised the ball and a helmet didn't fly up on that one. I mean, that was a collision. I have no idea how he hung on to that <laughs> ball. And it was instantaneous as well. Not only hard, but instantaneous. Wow. And he even had the wherewithal to get up to see if, uh, I guess he thought there wasn't contact. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, finish it off the end zone. Must not hurt the whistle. May not hurt anything getting hit like that. And they're going to treat. Him in the end zone, and Stewart's going to leave the game. It looks like he's favoring a shoulder. So we'll have to watch to see if he comes back in. The fact that Pargo is the one that's standing, like he's just fine in the huddle, really says something about how that play transpired. I don't want to speculate, but they're taking him to the corner, favoring that shoulder. That's, that might be one of those that popped out, and they're going to see a big pop it back Ooh. in. But he checks out as Omaha has first and goal from the eight-yard line. Trips to the near side. Actually, all four receivers will line up on the near side. Jackson will hand it off, and we have a flag on the play as it's handed off to Harden. I think Omaha may have had a legal procedure. Otherwise, it's a touchdown. No, it is. It's a legal defense coming on Salina, and it's going to be a touchdown for Omaha as they'll decline the penalty. And Omaha back out in front. The offense may want to look. They may leave him out there and go for two. I think with the one-point lead, they're going to leave Jeremy Reynolds on the bench as he's missed his last couple. We just talked about that. And now we got a flag. What's the flag for? Marvin Jones was trying to get his offense to stay on the field, and an uh, official just threw a flag randomly. Nobody near them. near him. I mean, there's not even a play going on. Nobody's arguing about anything at this point. It's a very interesting flag. I don't think anybody bumped him or anything. Like, there wasn't really a player near him. Yeah, I, okay. <laughs> oh, they, it was a ball in the stands. As the ball was returned. Let's not bring that up again. Oh, let's do it. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in a position now or not in a position now. I can, <laughs> I can have this discussion. Oh. Uh, yeah, if you were around last week, uh, you can't give away another team's balls. That's what we came up with. That was a fun week on social media. Hey, that's what social media is made for. <laughs> and Haran O'Neill goes, hey, we got precedent here. Let's talk about this. Uh, he's going to have to get out of the way here in a second because they're going to get lined up to do this. Omaha's going to go for two. Haran's like, didn't you watch the game last week? <laughs> Bad lip reading. <laughs> Probably insert that. So if the ball was returned, that's interesting. Twist on that call. I didn't know that piece. Huh. 
We'll check into that later. Omaha's going for two, trying to add to a one-point advantage. Jackson. Here comes a pass rush, and it's picked off and tackled and no good. Actually, they're going to try to run it. No, they called it dead. They called it dead as Salina tries to keep the play alive, but the whistles were blown, and people stopped play as Salina thinks they've got two. And now we got some uh, pushing and shoving away from the ball. This is going to start to turn into a game here, as you would expect. So the attempt is no good. It's 27-26. Omaha. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of jawing now. Oh, boy. This is going to get fun. Oh, yes, it is. We're still only in the third quarter. And needless to say, the crowd is not out of it. No, no, they are. They're not. So a big touchdown for the Beef to retake the lead. But we got to go back to that catch by Rashad Pargo. Jeez. An amazing catch as he got hit, hung onto the ball on third down nonetheless, to keep the drive alive, and Omaha takes the lead. And I don't know if you saw, but on that two-point conversion, he had Tyler Jones wide open. Had it not been tipped, that's a successful conversion. But, hey, you can coulda, shoulda, woulda all day long. So 6.49 to go, third quarter. A lot of discussions going on on the field. As uh, Ricky Burtz is on the field for some reason. On the near side, talking to the back judge. Ron O'Neill still talking about the play with the white hat on the other side. And uh, I, I'll just leave it at, we talk about the officiating in this league. I don't even know why you'd want it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to talk about the quality of it. You can just determine that. But I don't know why you'd want it. But some people like pain. <laughs> <laughs> so Omaha back out in front with 6.49 to go. Both teams are trying for their first ever championship. They started playing indoor football here in Salina 2013. The Salina Bombers rebranded into the Liberty. This is their third attempt in a row to get that championship. Omaha, it's their third attempt, but over a span of 22 years. Low line drive kick. It's fielded in the end zone. Brought out. Good coverage wow. as he's tackled down and in an open field tackle by Rashad Pargo. He's just fired up right now. I haven't seen this Rashad Pargo in a long time. I don't remember him making any tackles on kickoff returns this year. You don't want to upset the wrong people. <laughs> Salina will start with by far their worst field position of the night at the eight yard line. One point game, 27 26. Salina. Trying to return the favor. We've seen two touchdowns for Omaha in the second half. One for Salina. See if the defense can hold serve. Adams flushed out to the far side. Runs into a stack of beef after picking up five yards. Out to the 14 to be second down and five. And that's that dual threat that Adams brings to this offense for Salina. I don't think Kid really. He can run, but not that elusive. And we've seen them go exclusively with the pass, or excuse, exclusively with the ground game here in the second half. He has not thrown a pass yet. Second down and five. Six to go, third quarter. Fakes the handoff. He'll throw a pass here. He's going downfield. He has a man, but it's short. It's intercepted. Oh, wow. Omaha's intercepted, and it's Taylor Hawkins. Taylor Hawkins with the pickoff, and the defense has held as Hawkins gets his fifth interception of the season. Wow. He had his man down there, but that throw was short, and Hawkins was there to take advantage. And Omaha, with a big turnover, will start at their own five-yard line with 5.54 remaining here in the third quarter, trying to see if they can add to the one-point lead. So how about that? Wow. Wow. Well, we talked about it. Omaha's going to have to play a near-perfect game. They have not turned the ball over. Need a little bit of help from Salina. And they've had a couple opportunities. Now Omaha really needs to try to finish drives. That's been their Achilles heel all year, including tonight. Get it in the end zone. They're 45 yards away. See what they do. Jackson tucks it under on first down. Look at Blood. 10 yards. 
14 yards, but there's a flag away from the ball. There might be a hold that's going to wipe out Andrew Jackson's uh, longest run of the season. <laughs> and he is winded and not happy this is coming back. He likes to run about as much as I like to run. <laughs> Interesting flag here. What? Going to call Darden for a block below the waist. That was well away from the ball, though. Can you call that on him? Uh, you got to be pretty blocks. low. You got to be pretty blocks. low if you're him. He's five foot seven and got below the waist. <laughs> yeah, he may have been just locking up upright. <laughs> I think that's a little unfair. Uh, so it's a spot foul and actually puts the ball back at the five-yard line again. It'll be first down and 10 once again. 531 and counting, quarter number three. Omaha out in front by one. Here's a little short pass. It's complete to Jones Jr. Out to the 11-yard line. Good for six yards. Be second down and four. Called Jones Jr.'s name a couple of times. Uh, Called lots of Joneses on this team. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of Joneses. Called Jones, I'm usually okay. Omaha <laughs> fell to the Liberty 33 or 39 14, week number two here in Salina way back in April. And we got movement before the fly or before the snap and a good call. False start against Omaha. Wow. Look like the Left guard came up early. Patrick Barrett, I believe that was, over there. Gets the penalty. Backs him up five yards. It'll be second down and nine for Omaha. We're down to 4.53 in quarter number three. Second down and nine for the beef. Two wide outs on the near side. They're in motion. Jackson out of his own end zone. Wide wow. open. It's complete. Out near midfield. Montero, Montero gets his – Montero DeBose gets his first catch of the night. Out to the 24-yard line. Great and, time to have it. Yeah, that's good for 17 yards and a first down for Omaha. They move the chains as we're going to approach the four-minute mark. Omaha 27, Salina 26, Champions Bowl 6, Championship Game CIF, high motion near side. Oh, a little stop back and a backwards pass, and now they want to throw it again, and they throw downfield, but that ball hit the wall and was out of bounds when it did that on the backward pass. All they said is a forward pass and incomplete. Lucky that right was there. definitely a backwards pass. As Omaha was trying to do a halfback pass. They've been practicing this all week. He threw it backwards. He picked it up and then threw downfield. Oh, now they say it hit the wall. That's why I thought the call was. Because that pass definitely went backwards. Which appears to be the right call. But that turns into a seven-yard loss for Omaha. Backs them up to the 16-yard line. They need to get to the 16-yard line of Salina. It's second down for Omaha. Really need to try to finish a drive off here on offense. High motion on far side this time. Jackson drops back. He has time. And he has to buy some more time. Looked like a hold in the backfield. Finds Tyler Jones for a few yards across the 20 down to the 21. Jackson took a hit from Latimer at the end of that play. But it'll be third down and about 13 for Omaha. Ball is at the 21-yard line, 230 and counting, 27-26, beef in front. You hear the noise at the pizza box. (laughs) Jackson, empty, out of the gun. Here's the motion, Jackson has some time. Looks downfield. Has a man. It's complete. That's Darden once again. Leads forward, but they're going to say he hit the wall. He's going to be about a yard or two short of the first down. And this is no-brainer. He's not sending that kicker out. 
And it's going to be fourth down and two from the 17-yard line. No running backs even in the game for most of these offensive personnel for the beef. So expect a a short pass or some sort of a little handoff across the middle. 90 seconds and counting, third quarter, fourth and two for Omaha. Jackson takes it, drops back. Has time, tries to find a man. Near hold, there's the flag. Jackson's going to get the first down, but this is going to come back. He just needed so much time back there to get Marcus Owens on the call. Actually, it wasn't Owens. It was Junebug who was back there, and uh, it's tough to buy that much time against the front three of the Liberty without getting a little jersey. Yeah, very true. That's uh, you hate to see it, but you know maybe sometimes it's necessary because you only got the one quarterback suited up. So now it's fourth down and ten from the 23-yard line. So Omaha's going to go for it, but if they don't get it, they're going to turn it over from wherever they're at on the field. So that's a bigger issue here as we approach one minute to go in the third quarter trips to the near side and it looked like omaha's off size they let the play go pass is complete for a first down it's complete the norman darden who's having a heck of a night he gets it down to the 13 yard line make it the 12 first down for omaha as they're living right here on this drive there's about 10 seconds between the play clock and then the game clock for this third quarter. So they'll run this one, and that'll do it for the third. Game clock down to 30. Play clock at 15. Jackson out of the gun, lined up with Deshaun Jones in the backfield with him, trying to check off the play. He's going to have to hurry up. Play clock's down to five. Puts the men in motion far side. Jackson gives it to Jones, and it's into... The wall after the completion, maybe a gain of one, but the time is going to run out here in the third quarter, and we're going to have a four-quarter game here in Champions Bowl 6. Omaha 27, Salina 26. Should be a heck of a fourth quarter when we come back. You're listening to Omaha Be Professional Indoor Football right here on the Boomer Sports Network. Whether you need to get around town or get out of town for vacation, get your rental car, truck, or van from Budget Nebraska. Budget is locally owned and operated and conveniently located throughout Omaha, Lincoln, and Grand Island. Or you can visit them online at BudgetNebraska.com. Use the promo code BEEF for a 20% discount on select vehicles. Cool cars close by. Budget Nebraska is the official car rental company of the Omaha Beef. At First Command Financial Services, they are committed to coaching our nation's military families become financially disciplined and confident. They pride themselves on helping clients get financially squared away from the start of their military careers all the way to retirement and beyond. Give them a call today. It's 402-291-3040 or visit them on their website at firstcommand.com. Proud sponsors of Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football. We've all heard the old saying, you're the company that you keep. And in everything they do at Valley Marine, their goal is to be the company that you keep, that helpful friend you call with a problem, that place you just drop by to say hello and share a laugh. Their dealership is comprised of an incredible team of people, all boaters like yourselves, with a common purpose, to give you, the customer, the very best on water. It's simple, really, the golden rule. Treat others the way you would like to be treated. Call today, 402 704-4961 704-4961 or visit their website at valleymarine.net. Fourth quarter here, Champions Bowl 6, Omaha 27, Salina 26. The beef came in and uh, they knew their underdogs had nothing to prove. Just figured go in, see what happens and... You could feel they were loose coming into this game, and they've been playing like they've got nothing to lose here tonight. As they have a drive now, second down and nine from the Salina, 12. High motion, far side, handoff to Jones up the middle. Oh, he got tripped up. Picks up three, and good thing Jake Latimer 
got a hand on him or else he may have just taken that right up the middle for a touchdown. Yeah, he had a little window there. There was a couple of blue jerseys right at the goal line, but who knows if you could have spun out of that, what would have happened right there? Third down and seven. The ball is at the nine. And now, again, you got to start thinking about your kicking situation. Does this make it four down territory for Marvin Jones in these situations? It'll be tough. Decision. Play clock's under 10. The beef break the huddle. They're going to have to hurry up. And Marvin Jones sees it. He's going to call a timeout. So Omaha uses their first timeout of the second half as the play clock was starting to expire. Be a 30-second timeout as they regroup here for this third down play. So 27-26, we talked about two Champions Bulls in a row for the Liberty. This is the third in a row as uh, could not get past the Duke City Gladiators in the previous two. And we'll just say, we, we've seen things this week that Salina was, say, expecting to win this game with some of their... Uh, promotional materials and uh, scheduling of events and stuff that we've <laughs> seen online and in the arena when we got here today? Like I said, you got to love social media in the world of sports. Anti-social media. So out of the timeout, 14-16 to go. It's third down and seven for Omaha. Jackson has time. Quick throw. It's complete to Pargo, and he gets the first down at the one-yard line. It's going to be first and goal for Omaha. Rashad Pargo. He's made a couple huge catches here in the second half of play. Omaha, first and goal at the one-yard line. They did have a situation like this in the first half and couldn't convert. As Omaha puts in their goal line package, high formation, fullback and a running back. Jackson under center. He leans forward. Wow. It's a touch. Oh, they're going to say he's short. What? Are you kidding me? Wow. His whole upper body was in the end zone. And there's a lot of upper body. <laughs> That's a lot of upper body. They're going to say that knee was down. We've seen that call a couple times made against Omaha uh, last week as well. They're going to get right back on and see if they can do it again. There he goes that time. He's in. <laughs> And this line judge on the near side still hasn't given it to him. It's a touchdown for Omaha. But now they're going to say the play was stopped. And they call a false start. A legal procedure on Omaha. Wow. They'll back him up five yards. That's what happened last time. Omaha had that goal line situation. And that makes that play before. That much bigger. So five and a half yards out, second down and goal. Omaha trying to add to a one-point lead, 13 minutes to go here in regulation. Jackson taking his time. He needs to hurry up. Marvin Jones is telling him, you only got 10 on the play clock. Let's go. Already had to use one timeout. Jackson under center. Takes a snap, fakes a pitch. Dances back around. Now he's getting chased around. Throws into the corner. It's complete for a touchdown. 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 Tyler Jones. Jones with his second touchdown of the night. And Omaha is out in front by seven with the extra point to come. But Jackson is down on the far side. This is a concern. Oh, no. I did not see what happened as he was running around if he took a hit. And now they're going to go review it just because. But Jackson is down. I didn't see if he got a hit at the end of that play. I'm sure he did, but he's being helped up right now. Looks like he's walking it off. Which, if, if that's a touchdown, he gets some time on the sideline. And the camera views of Salina doesn't show it. As Jackson comes off the field, he did get a hit. We can see it on the coach's film, which ironically is way better than the broadcast film. <laughs> so he did take a hit into the board at the end of that run as he threw it. 
And now the officials are coming out after reviewing this play. And uh, still waiting for the review. The ball's at the two-yard line, waiting for the point after. But we've seen two plays reversed on officials' reviews here tonight, which is atypical in this venue, mainly because of the lack of camera angles. I don't know how they're going to see anything on this near side wall that would help them because the cameras are all on this side for however many cameras there are. And we will let you know they are uh, not in good positions. No, we can't see it. We've got the bird's eye view up here in the crow's nest, but there is a suite that blocks both corners of the end zone on the near side for us. Supposed to be inconclusive evidence if they reverse a call. Taking some time, of course, as we mentioned, this uh, replay monitor is not close. As everybody awaits, as we stand right now, it's a seven-point game pending the outcome of this review. Twelve thirty-six in regulation. Trying to see where Andrew Jackson is. If what they are doing with him. I don't see Drew on the sideline, and I do not see their oh, there trainer he is. either. He's, oh. on, he's here. He's got his helmet off. He's behind the post from where you're at. Oh. So he looks like he's okay. And here comes the officiating crew as everybody anticipates what this is going to be. <laughs> and they confirm the touchdown, and Omaha has a seven-point lead. Jeremy Reynolds, if he can hit an extra point, he'll make it eight, but he's missed two in a row. See if he can shake it off. Good snap. Place was down. Kick is up, and he misses three in a row. I thought it was good, but... So, (laughs) it's a seven-point game, a huge extra point, and he's missed three now, so you can figure out how big those are there's a group of omaha fans right next to those goalposts they all signaled it was good and (laughs) you gotta think you know one of them maybe they're wrong but (laughs) seven of them oh they were coordinated tried to sell it (laughs) so 12 25 remaining in regulation omaha started Playing indoor football in 2000, the longest-running indoor football team in the country. And they do not have a championship, so obviously the longest drought in indoor football without a championship as well. Could tonight be the night? We got 12:25 to see how this all plays out. I couldn't believe that it was still the third quarter when everything started to get heated up. Here we are in the fourth. And, and uh, strap in. Hang on. Do I have the over-under on how many scores we're still going to see in this game? <laughs> Boy, you never know. As uh, Salina, we know, can score quick. But Omaha's proven they can as well. So, seven-point lead. Reynolds puts the ball on the tee. We'll see what he's instructed to do. Approaches it. Right foot into it, low line drive kit, gets a good bounce. Brooks has to chase it, one-hands it at the goal line. Out to the five, looks for room on the far side. 10, 15, spin move, almost got away. He's tackled at the 17-yard line. So good coverage once again. Malcolm McCoy on the tackle there. Brooks is a little slow to get up there, but it doesn't look like anything serious. Looked like one of those deals where two guys were on top of each other and – didn't want to move the wrong thing and look like they were uh, starting something up <laughs> that way. So they they cautiously unpiled. We're at that point of the championship where you're going to start to see teammates of players keep other guys in check, you know. So ball is at the 18-yard line. Salina starts 12-10. Clock is running. Trips on the near side. Tyree Adams stays in the game. Two men, high motion, pass rush, has time, flag on the play. They blow it dead. 
They blew this play dead, which means we have a false start on Salina. They'll back them up five yards. So Salina starting to make some uncharacteristic mistakes, mental mistakes, as it'll be first down and 15 for the Liberty. Remember, both these quarterbacks, very talented, but are both rookies that are playing for Salina. Do not have this championship game experience that some of the rest of the team has over the last couple of years for the Liberty. Adams flushed out of the pocket, out to the 15, back to the original line of scrimmage at the 18-yard line. It'll be second down and 10. And if the defense can come up with a stand, we'll just play. start running some clock. Big drive here for both teams. You can feel the tension in the building as it is ratcheted up. A lot of people not expecting a four-quarter game here in Champions Bowl six. Second down and 10. Trips now to the far side. One on the near side. Adams drops back, has pressure, throws it into coverage and knocked down. Wow, and good coverage. Marshall. Marshall on the one on one coverage. Bats it to the ground. Be third down and 10. Passing game, as we mentioned, has been tough for Salina here tonight, which is uncharacteristic with some of the talented receivers that they have. Salina just leading pretty much every offensive cat- category in Champions Indoor Football in 2021. They'll line up everybody to the left side this time. Brooks in the pistol formation. Swing two around. High motion near side. Drops back. Third down and 10. Adams gives it to Brooks. Brooks on the run. Has some room and gets nine yards. It was third down and 10. He gets nine. It's be fourth down and one as he hit the wall. He tried to lunge the ball forward to get the mark, but they said he hit the wall. It'll be fourth down and one. Yeah, he hesitated on that. He stutter stepped right just short of where they marked him. So a huge play for the defense. As the ball is at the 23-yard line of Omaha, it's fourth down and one. They've stopped them once on downs here tonight. Can they do it again? Adams, pistol formation, Brooks in the backfield, three receivers near side. High motion, Adams drops back. He's going to look downfield. Has to throw it, and it's up and caught. What a catch. Nice effort, Chad Steinwachs had to jump up and get it. He did. It's a first down for Salina down to the 14. Big play. Very big play. And I was shocked when I saw Adams drop back for that. But, you know, it doesn't surprise me with Haran being in a fourth and short situation. You know, catch him off guard and get that short over the middle play. Steinwachs, six foot four, needed every inch of it on that play. Nine minutes to go. Brooks on the handoff. He's got room. Ten. Five, turns the corner, touchdown, Salina. Thirty-three, thirty-two, extra point to come. The Liberty have responded. It can tie this game up if they can make an extra point. As we're under 8.45 to go in regulation. Jimmy Allen, one of the best in the game on extra points, but he has missed here tonight. Can he miss another one? Brooks comes out to hold. Allen sets up, awaits a snap. Low snap, brought down, put down, kick is up, and it is good. And with 7.59 remaining here in regulation in Champions Bowl 6, we are tied up at 33. What a game here tonight for the championship of CIF. We'll come right back. Timeout on the field. You're listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football on the Boomer Sports Network. Attention craft beer fans at Pint 9. They're committed to tradition and innovation. They stand on the tradition of brewers before them to create aroma-driven American ales and complex Belgian beers. They appreciate fine German lagers 
and English session ales, but they also crave the innovation of one-off batches and barrel aging. Their beers are highly fermentable and highly digestible while being scientifically sound and artfully executed. They hope you enjoy drinking their beers as much as they enjoy brewing them. Visit their website today. It's pint9brewing.com. Cheers. Thinking of updating your bath? Make your first call to Bath Fitter. For over 35 years, Bath Fitter has been installing beautiful luxury tubs in as little as one day. There's no demo, no mess, and with thousands of options to choose from, you can custom design a bath that you will love. A bath that's guaranteed for as long as you own your home. With Bath Fitter, master the reno and skip the demo. Visit bathfitter.com today to book your free in-home consultation and join over 2 million satisfied customers. Well, we thought we couldn't top last week's epic battle between Omaha and Sioux City. 40-39, to 39, Omaha was victorious in that one. We've got one going here for the championship. 33 all with 7.59 to go in regulation. Just a reminder, you're listening to KOBM Omaha, 94.5 FM, 1420 AM, and all across the World Wide Web's on MyBoomerRadio.com. Todd Walkenhorst, Richard Team, and Nick Burris back at Network Control. Tom Corridor, offsite support here tonight. As both teams here tonight lack one thing, and that is a championship. One of them's going to get it. Still in doubt who. 7.59 to go in regulation. Salina has just tied the game up, and now a kickoff. High end over end kick. Jones fields it in the end zone after the 5-10. Looking for another big return. Near side, 20. Gets hit and brought down at the 22. As Omaha will have good field position with 7.49 remaining here in the fourth quarter. And they are on top of getting their guys out of that end zone because they know that for the rest of this quarter, they're going to be receiving the kickoff down in their far end zone. So they've got their guys locked and ready to get out there on the field, save some time. Time starts becoming a factor running clock. Omaha could put together a nice long drive with a score. That's the important part is the score and ideally a touchdown. We'll see who can execute here in Champions Bowl 6. Seven and a half to go. First down, Omaha. Jackson, quick throw. It's complete across the middle. Jones Jr., Anthony, that is. The rookie out of Marion University out to midfield. It's second down and five. And another good grab by Jones Jr. We've seen that several times this game. Clock approaching seven minutes to go here in regulation. Omaha taking their time. Had a pretty good second half on offense. Jackson drops back, has time. Up the far side, there's a handful of jersey and nothing. Wow. As that was incomplete to Norman Darden, he's yelling for the flag. You can see it from up here. (laughs) He's got a case. And no flag on the play. He's got a little jersey, too, and you saw that whole thing. Yeah, Marvin Jones is talking about it as well. And uh, that's going to be one that uh, Omaha fans definitely going to want as we have an injured player on there. And looks like we got some cramping going on, as we mentioned, a, a warm night all across the Midwest, obviously. But... Uh, Warm and humid in this facility as well. I just started actually feeling some cool air up here for the first time. <laughs> yeah, I had to peel off some layers. Um, yeah, stop there though, please. <laughs> Six thirty-eight to go in regulation as the injury timeout will start the clock back up. Third down and five for the beef. The ball is at midfield on the SL for Salina. I assume that's what it stands for. I assume, too. Jackson puts the men in high motion, drops back. Quick throw. Oh, more contact and no flag. It's incomplete. Uh, Anthony Jones, Jr., the intended receiver. Looked like the defensive back was there early, but nothing doing. And Marvin Jones will keep him out there for fourth down. I've heard of letting them play, but that it's starting to look ridiculous out there. Like, they're just all over them. 
Under six to go. You hear the crowd here at the Pizza Palace in Salina, Omaha. Needs a fourth down conversion. We're tied at 33. High motion, far side, and we've got whistles. And now a little uh, afterwards, but Omaha calls timeout before the play. So Omaha uses their second timeout with 5.37 to go here in regulation. I didn't see if the play clock was down or I did. It was. Okay, uh, so he yeah, wanted to save the penalty there. The receivers were about a yard shy when it hit zero, so they weren't going to get that ball out either. It was going to, you know, be delay a game or offside something. We'll see what they like to do now. Out of the timeout, the crowd gets riled up once again. 5.37 to go when they start the clock. Two wideouts on the far side in high motion. Two wideouts at the line of scrimmage. Jackson. Oh, and Omaha's way offsides as they did not get the snap count correct. That's good backup. Omaha another five yards. And Marvin Jones may want to think about trying to put the kicker out there. Two flags on the on well, the There is right two now. flags. Oh. Uh, And Omaha puts another bullet in their own foot as they back up another five yards. It's going to be fourth down and 11. And you may want to think about kicking this away. You do not convert. You're giving to this line at the ninth, their own 19, or at the Omaha 19. But nope, he's going to leave the offense out there with his defense. I don't know. It's fourth down and 11, two wideouts far side. It's on the shoulders of Jackson. Drops back. Here comes the blitz. Goes downfield. It's incomplete. And a late hit. Well, I guess it was a late hit on Jackson. And Omaha's going to give the ball this line at the 20-yard line. So Omaha's going to need their defense to come up big now, but I don't know. Have to wonder about a tied game right there, giving them this kind of field position on a low percentage. But I guess with the way you've been kicking, yeah. you can't count on that either, even it not getting blocked. So Salina comes up big on defense. Here's their chance. 5.32 to go. We're tied at 33. They're going to start at the Omaha 20-yard line. Champions Bowl 6 on the line. 330 seconds to go in regulation. Look at this formation. As Adams hands off, Brooks has a blocker, a little shoestring, spins out of it, has room, 10-5, brought down at the three. Good piece of running for Tracy Brooks. He picks up 17 yards on first down. It's first and goal for Salina from the three-yard line. We're under five minutes to go. First and goal for the Liberty. Now taking their time. Play clock at 10. Adams under center. I formation. For the Liberty, one wide out on each side, high motion, Brooks, swing pass, and Omaha sniffs this one out. No gain. In fact, maybe a loss of a yard or two. So they back him up a couple yards. It's going to be second down and goal from the five. 415 and counting in the fourth quarter. 33 33, Salina and Omaha. Can't make this up. Can't script it. More than we could have expected here tonight. We're under four minutes to go in regulation. Salina taking all the time they can. Second and goal four yards out. Adams drops back, dances around, scrambles, looks to the corner of the end zone, touchdown. Stein walks once again. Got loose in the corner of the end zone. And connects 
for the four-yard touchdown pass, and the Liberty regained the lead with 3.43 remaining here in the fourth quarter, 39-33, extra point forthcoming. Jimmy Allen comes in for the extra point. Kick is up. It's off the upright again. He's missed again. Wow. So another rare miss for Jimmy Allen. And with 3.43 to go, the Liberty is out in front, 39-33. We'll take a timeout and come back. Final minutes, fourth quarter. What a game here. Champions Bowl 6. You're listening to my beat professional indoor football here on the Boomer Sports Network. Nebraska Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, they strive to be a center of excellence for orthopedics and sports medicine. They're also the official doctors of the Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football Team. They're a group of board-certified orthopedic physicians, many of whom have had fellowships or trained in subspecialty areas. Their physicians have trained among some of the top medicine experts and training facilities in the country. They place a great deal of value on each and every opportunity they have to assist patients regain their quality of life they deserve. Call them today, 402-488-3322. Three forty-three to go. Champions Bowl six. Salina Liberty thirty-nine. Omaha thirty-three. Salina just took the lead. Omaha will get the ball back and will need a touchdown. One timeout remaining for Omaha. They've had to use two to avoid getting penalties on the play clock. We'll see if that comes back to bite them. And seen a myriad of extra points missed by both teams. Yeah, it's like I said, special teams would be the difference maker in this game. And sure enough, like, wow, the points left out there. Deshaun Jones back deep with Trey Dudley Giles for the kickoff. Jones, of course, returned the opening kickoff of the second half for a touchdown. And we're going to have a bouncing kick. It's going to be fielded by Jones. He has the blockers in front of him. He's out to the 10, the 15, the 20. Spins around into Salina territory. Spins again wow. inside the 20. Down to the 18-yard line. What a return for Sean Jones. Jeez. He had a couple of spin moves in there. Like somebody had a Madden controller and just started hitting the button. Man, need about one more. Maybe could have broke that all the way. But it's going to be good field position for Omaha. They've had much better field position in the second half compared to the first half where they started every drive backed up. 3.33 to go. 39-33. Omaha trails by six. Loud crowd here in Salina. Omaha got stopped on downs on their last possession. Salina turned it into a touchdown. Jackson, two wideouts far side. Play clock down to five, takes a snap. Here's a quick pitch over to Jones. Jones up the far sideline. It's good for near first down yardage. Let's see where they mark him. It's going to be good first down, down to the... Nine-yard line, first and goal for Omaha. We're under three minutes to go here in regulation. Omaha can really take some time here, and they are doing just that. First and goal, Omaha. They trail by six. The ball is at the nine-yard line. Two and a half minutes. The clock is running. They'll flip the formation. Two wideouts. Going to be in high motion on the near side. Tyler Jones at the line of scrimmage. Jackson flushes out to the right side. Now he's going to try to get a little himself, and he gets pulled down from behind. Jake Latimer, once again, he's always around the line of scrimmage, and no gain on the play for Jackson. Be second down and goal as we approach the two-minute mark. <laughs> Omaha. Omaha. In 2019, conference championship, similar scenario, got down to the end zone as time was expiring. Two-point conversion to tie it up was no good. That's how the season ended in 2019. What will happen here? Jackson has time, looks at the end zone, has a man, and it's caught. It's a touchdown. 
It's a diving catch for Tyler Jones. How did he get that? He had to battle the wall and the defender, and we are tied at 39 with 142 to go in regulation with an extra point to come. Tyler Jones, once again, I believe that's his third touchdown. No, second touchdown of the night. No, that's his third touchdown, is it? Yeah, that's his third touchdown. How about that? I was that? just looking at it. One, two, two, three. Deshaun Jones had the kick return. Here's the kick by Reynolds. It is up, and it is good. And Omaha is out in front, 40-39 to 39 with 142 remaining, which coincidentally is the score of last week's game. In the victory against Sioux City. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> this is a championship. So the fans are getting their money's worth. One way or the other as this game is going to go down to the wire. 142 remaining in regulation. The Liberty are getting the ball back. And you got to remember, though, they trail by one, but they got one of the best field goal kickers in the game, too, with yep. a leg with his season long of 48 yards. Uh, if it comes down to that, I don't think the Liberty would have qualms about putting Jimmy Allen on the field to try to win a championship. So we'll see what happens as Omaha prepares to give the ball back to the Liberty. What a game. It was 19 to 15 at halftime. Much different second half. Both teams made adjustments, and the offenses have picked it up a couple notches here in half number two. They give the ball to Reynolds. He's going to put it right in the middle of the field. See what he does with it. It's a low line drive kick. Brooks back in the end zone. Has to play it off the wall. Gets it. Brings it out to the five. Goes to the left side. Tries to find the corner. The 10 to 15. Has a couple blockers out near midfield again. Good field position for Salina. They'll start at the Omaha 24-yard line. And this will be about 40-yard field goal already for Jimmy Allen. Just keep that in the back of your head. It is in his range. Probabilities obviously are tough. It's a small goal post in indoor, but he's capable of doing his long on the season, 48 yards, 90 seconds to go in regulation, Champions Bowl 6. So if you're Haran O'Neal, what kind of offense are you going with right now? I don't think you change a thing. You try to give it to Brooks, see if you get big chunks of yardage and make sure you don't turn the ball over. That's the only thing that can kill you at this point. Clock has started. It's rolling under 90 seconds. Mass shift. They move the formation to the near side. Adams gives it to Brooks. Brooks turns the corner into Omaha territory, into the wall at the Omaha 20. He picks up a half dozen, and that should take us to the one-minute warning. 60 seconds to go in Champions Bowl 6. Omaha 40, Salina 39. We're in for a great finish. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. You're listening to Omaha Beef professional indoor football here on the Boomer Sports Network. Attention craft beer fans at Pint Nine. They're committed to tradition and innovation. They stand on the tradition of brewers before them to create aroma-driven American ales and complex Belgian beers. They appreciate fine German lagers and English session ales, but they also crave the innovation of one-off batches and barrel aging. Their beers are highly fermentable, and highly digestible while being scientifically sound and artfully executed. They hope you enjoy drinking their beers as much as they enjoy brewing them. Visit their website today. It's pint9brewing.com. Cheers. It is expensive to buy a house right now in Omaha. We know. So you're looking to rent. Smart move. But you need to be smart with who you rent with. You need to check out Crown Property Management for your next rental. Professional property management. Not just some landlords owning properties as a hobby. They take care of your issues and are fair and honest. AC goes out, they're on it. Roof leaks, just hit them up. Orange slime coming out of your sewer. We know nobody wants to deal with orange stuff. Find your next property at crownmanagementomaha.com. When looking for your next property, just look for the crown. Yes. 
60 seconds to go. Champions Bowl 6. Omaha hanging on to a one-point lead. Here's a handoff to Brooks for Salina. He fights for a yard. It's going to be third down and four. Haran O'Neill, head coach of Salina, has a championship in the IFL with the Billings team. Elected to the IFL Hall of Fame this year. Would love to add that CIF ring to his hand. 35 seconds to go. Hand fakes a snap to Brooks. Adams flushes out. He has room on the near side, and he's bounced inside the 10. That will stop the clock with 26 seconds to go. Well in field goal range for Jimmy Allen. Tyree Adams on the keeper with a big chunk of yardage on third down. A huge conversion for the Liberty. Salina uses their first timeout of the second half. They have two remaining. There's 27 seconds to go. It's a one-point game. It'll be first and goal for the Liberty from the nine-yard line as they try to take the lead here in the final seconds and get their first league championship. Omaha could use a a fumble or mishandle right now. Remember, that quarterback is a rookie. Adams. Puts Brooks into motion. They hand it off to Brooks. Brooks turns the corner. He picks up a yard, but Toronto O'Neill is going to have to use his second time out as he gets down to the seven-yard line. It's second and goal with 23 seconds to go. You know Salina would prefer to put it in the end zone than deal with those small go posts for the victory, even with Jimmy Allen. Omaha and Salina have split the season series. Omaha came in here April 17th. Lost 39 to 14. Salina visited the slaughterhouse on June 12th, and Omaha is victorious 39 35. 40 to 39 right now, Omaha. Trying to hang on to one-point lead, 23 seconds to go. Out of the timeout, second and goal from the seven for the Liberty. Handoff is to Brooks. Brooks has a blocker in. He gets a couple of yards down to the three, and the Liberty will use their timeout. That's their last timeout now. So we'll see what Haran O'Neill wants to do on third and goal. He's going to leave the offense out for now. Need to get in the end zone or out of bounds to stop that clock. As they won't be able to stop it, and it'll be fourth down. O'Neill gives his team the play call in the huddle. They break the huddle. 16 seconds to go when we snap the ball. Champions Bowl on the line. Liberty trailed Omaha Beef by one. Adams with Brooks. And we've got movement. And who's this going to be on? I think it's going to be on the Liberty. Both lines were moving. Who are they going to call it on? Salina looks like they're backing up. It is a false start on Salina. So a huge penalty backs them up five yards. As Salina will go for it on third down. Obviously now probably eliminates that, that run option. We've been pretty risky from three yards out, but if you have Brooks, it may not have been the worst play call. No. I think he would have been a decoy, though. We'll see what they do now. 16 seconds to go. Third and goal from the eight-yard line. Beef out in front by one. Beef trying to come up big. Pistol formation. Brooks in the backfield. 
Adams drops back. He's looking. He has time. Throws it out of play. And it's going to come down to a field goal attempt with 12 seconds to go. We're next to the Salina coaches. You know that is not what they wanted. Nobody wants the kickers to decide the games. It's the biggest kick of Allen's career. It's going to be a 23-yard field goal attempt for Allen. He has missed one earlier. Omaha needs him to miss one. This is for the game. 12 seconds to go. Salina looking for the lead. The snap. Placement's down. The kick is blocked. Oh my it's blocked. It's out of play, and the oh defense has come up on special teams, it's and Omaha is eight seconds away from their first championship on a huge special teams play. It was blocked. Oh, my. Can you believe that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's 40 to 39. <laughs> That's how Omaha won last week against Sioux City. And the Beef are eight seconds away. First championship in franchise history. They started in 2000. They've come close a couple of times. It's been a long time for Omaha Beef fans. And what a game. Champions Bowl 6 as uh, fans start to exit the Tony's Pizza Event Center. Oh, my. Is this going to be a victory formation? Jackson (laughs) just has to move it forward to keep this clock running. He does just that and gets a couple extra. He goes down, and the clock is going to run to triple zeros. Oh, my God. And it took 22 (laughs) years of aging, but the Beef are now graded champions. They won. Can you believe that? 40 to 39, Omaha Beef have come into Salina and done the unthinkable, defeating the Salina (laughs) Liberty 40 to 39. Todd, it has been an honor and a privilege to call this one with you. I'll tell you what, those are two of the best indoor football games we saw over the last two weeks. Yeah. And uh, wow, you can't explain what has just happened here and how big of a victory this was for Omaha, considering how big of underdogs they were, and rightfully so. That was a talented Salina Liberty team. And for Coach Haran O'Neill, uh, and one of the best of the business, good friend of yeah. ours, three Champions Bowls in a row well, coming up on the short end. That one right here is going to hurt probably the worst, having it in your home building, being down on this part of the field, having a shot with a short field goal, and just not converting. Play by the B fence, blocks field goal on one of the most consistent kickers in the whole league in what's very makeable range. I got a presentation to get down to on the field. <laughs> we'll be right back. The Omaha B for the 2021 CIF champions. You've been listening to it right here on the Boomer Sports Network. We'll come back, wrap it up here on the Boomer Sports Network. Mr. Porky Butts, Blaine Hunter, he grew up barbecuing in South Texas from a very young age. He was helping his dad check in the temps of fires as soon as he could help. The passion that would happen in the world of low and smoke pit smoking. Over 27 years of experience combined with culinary education from Johnson and Wales and FVTC culinary schools, he started competing professionally in the barbecue circuit in 2013. Five short years later, he's accumulated one of the most impressive resumes on the barbecue circuit across the country. You have to try it today. 154th just north of Maple and at PorkyButtsBBQ.com. The hottest investments around right now are in real estate, but once you purchase the rental property, you need to make sure you manage it right. Crown Property Management, they will help. Many property management companies are not proactive when managing your rentals. The end result? 
more repairs, more fees, more cost to you because of their lack of management. These aren't property managers, they're rent collectors. Crown Property Management will make sure that your dream investments don't become your nightmares. and result, more money in your pocket. Contact us today, crownmanagementomaha.com. Cell phone repair with five locations, Lake Manawa, 79th and Dodge, 148th and Maple, 168th and Center, and 24th and Cornhusker. Expert repairs done fast. Gadgets play a major role in your personal and professional life. When your phone, tablet, or laptop breaks, you need professional service fast. That's where we come in. Is your phone dying too soon, or are you constantly hooking up to your charger? The experts at Cell Phone Repair can get it replaced 30 minutes or less so you can stay connected. Stop in today to one of our five locations or find us online at CellPhoneRepair.com. CPR bringing your gadgets back to life. Back at the Tony's Pizza Event Center. Final time here. Omaha Beef pulling up the unthinkable upset. 40-39 to 39 over the Salina Liberty. As uh, not really a trophy celebration, uh, there's a trophy. They have it. It's theirs. There's a, not a commissioner right now in the CIF, so nobody really to present the award uh, but the Omaha beef know what to do with it and you have to think about uh, some of the players a lot of them brought into this league by Haran O'Neill ironically enough Andrew Jackson he was a part of the team that last went to Champions Bowl with the Salina Liberty and came up short Uh, quite likely that's his last football game he just played and he uh, put in quite the effort even ran a couple times in the last uh, couple games Something that uh, he's not prone to do too often. Marvin Jones, he's been a head coach in indoor for some very bad situations, including Cedar Rapids in the IFL, the Colorado Crush. He comes in here, gets an opportunity. Not only that, he had to play for the Jets for 11 years. So a championship for Marvin Jones as he brings the first to Omaha and the only professional sports team in Omaha has won a championship so final time here tonight for Tom Corridor, Nick Burris, Richard Team, and everybody who's helped us throughout the season James Kerwin, Kirk Heyer Uh, thanks to Ricky Birds, Pat Combs at the Boomer Sports Network final score tonight Omaha victorious in Champions Bowl 6, 40-39 from Salina, Kansas good night everybody Omaha on the count of three. I need you to please ring your bells for me. Tell the whole world what you come to see. One, two, three. Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football on the Boomer Sports Network was brought to you by First Command, B&D Turf Cars, Bath Fitter, Berkshire Hathaway Realtor, Free Beck, Budget Rent-A-Car, Celeron, Certified Piedmontese, Comfort Inn & Suite, CPR, Cell Phone Repair, Crown Property Management, DBS Burke, Down Syndrome Alliance, Eternal Tattoo, Great Clips, In-Phase Car Audio, Jerseys, Kingdom Insurance, Kings Moving, La Smash, Luftys, Mangelsons, Marines, Mattress King, McAllister's Deli, Nebraska Ortho and Sports, Ozzy's, Peaceful Roads, Pint Nine, Porky Butts, Roberts Nursery, Salsaritas, Schrock Innovations, Scores, See the Trainer, Titanium HVAC, Valley Marine, and Zero Res. Make sure to catch every Omaha Beef professional indoor football game home and away on the Boomer Sports Network. And join us on Monday nights of game weeks at 6 o'clock for the head coaches show with head coach Marvin Jones live from the Firewater Bar and Grill at the Comfort Inn and Suites at 70th and Grover, all on the Boomer Sports Network. Beef, 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 beef,